Hi, everyone. I'm Tony Schiavone welcoming you to the StarCast Event Center with some exciting news. It's just been announced that the StarCast Weekend Pass is now available for only $99. Now, that's more than 20 shows over 40 hours of content for only $99. Plus, you'll get $20 in fight credit that can be used on any future purchase. Hey, by the way, is All In going to be on, uh, be on Fight TV? Go to fight.tv, that's fight.tv forward slash StarCast before it's too late. I'm Tony Schiavone from the StarCast Event Center. Today's episode of What Happened When is brought to you by fight.tv forward slash StarCast. Head on over right now if you haven't already to find out about the ultimate VIP experience brought to you by our friends at Wrestling Travel. Travel, you say? That's right, man. Maybe you missed your chance at all in tickets. Maybe the platinum bracelet sold out before you could snag a pair. What if there were a second chance? You see, whenever you pre-order StarCast on Fight, not only will you get 20 live shows, not only will you get more than 40 hours of content that you can watch both live or on demand with unlimited replays, now you'll be automatically entered into a drawing that we're going to make on August 27th. Now, what do you win? How about round trip airfare to Chicago? Plus three nights and a hotel suite. And as if that weren't enough, Platinum bracelets to StarCast, VIP access to the after party, an eat and greet every single day, every official meet and greet, but best of all, two front row tickets to all in. You can't buy this. This is priceless, but you're automatically entered to win this ultimate StarCast experience right now, whenever you pre-order and what a great value. Not only do you get all these shows, you get $20 back in fight credit. Hey, you could use that towards all in. Get all the details right now at fight.tv forward slash starcast. That's F I T E dot TV forward slash starcast. And don't forget, there's two R's in starcast. Hurry, this contest ends August 27th. Uh, hello. Yeah, yes. Hi, is this thing on? Are we recording? Okay, good. Uh, yes. Hello. Hi. Uh, Promotional consideration paid for by the following. If you want more of Conrad Thompson, you know Conrad Thompson, the guy who sold out to become a big time wrestling promoter. Ah, good for him. And Tony Schiavone. Who's that? A old wrestling announcer. Oh, never heard of him. Anyway, head over to patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday, complete with behind the scenes videos and new content every week. That's patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. And by lowestrules.com, one of the hottest sites over on prowrestlingtees.com, the place to get all your favorite t shirts from what happened when. So, what did happen when? You don't know? Huh. Well, neither does Tony and Eric. Ha uh-huh. ha. Aha! Remember, lowestrules.com, named after a crazy lady. Boxygimmicks.com, complete with coffee mugs, baby onesies, beach towels, cozies, and a whole lot more. To shamelessly show your support of what happened to when, something to wrestle with, and any three weeks, head over to boxygimmicks.com. Slapdick Theater, with your host, Kalanis Adumas. Sounds like a schmuck. Okay. So if it's all right with you, I'm going to go have a pastrami sandwich, maybe some matzo soup, and uh, we'll call this a day. Yeah, okay, goodbye. See you. Yes, goodbye. Thank you. Okay. 
1605 NWA, TV title, Cajun Omni, the Bunkhouse Stampede, Flair and Horseman, Garvin, Bogey, Magnum, Dusty, Express Tag Team, Turner, Bond, and Mid-South Joy World Championship Wrestling. Talking about the great years of World Championship Wrestling, the NWA and Jim Crockett Promotions. Tony and Friends North, they win, look, Shivani's back again, World Title Split Off, Center Stage, Bischoff, Disney, Hogan, and Nitro, New World Order, and The Crow, Thunder Russo, Arquette Champ, Vinny Mac simulcast. Tony's back with Conrad. Not your classy podcast. Watch along, try not to laugh. Lois rules cat back. This wasn't the initial plan. Tom Zig's a good looking man. Quandike Bill, make a chair. Tommy, you come over here. What happened when? WHW Monday. And now, let's go to the ring. And here's your co host. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to What Happened When Monday on the MLW Radio Network. If you're on Patron, otherwise, happy Wednesday to you. Tony, what's going on, man? How are you? Conrad, it's an exciting week, isn't it? I, I, look, we got SummerSlam coming up this week as we're broadcasting this for the first time, as you and I are, are recording this. And, and this is always a, a big week big weekend for wrestling fans everywhere. And and that's why we got the show today, uh, to bring to you. So we're pretty excited about it. Uh, I'm excited because I'm going to go back and take a look back when I was, uh, I was ready to start a new chapter in my career. So I'm doing great. I hope you're doing well. Uh, we'll talk more about SummerSlam, but man, we got Starcast coming up real, real soon. The countdown is on Conrad Thompson, promoter of the year. Are you ready? Well, ready or not, here it comes, man. I am excited about the promotion we've got for Starcast on Fight. If you haven't already, check out fight.tv forward slash Starcast, F I T E forward slash Starcast. And there's two R's in Starcast. But what's cool about this is we've partnered with our buddies over there at Wrestling Travel. And man, they're pulling out all the stops. If you wanted to be all in but couldn't swing it, now you can actually go ahead and get an opportunity to get round trip airfare for two to Chicago. When you get there, you've got three nights hotel stay all taken care of in a suite, but as if that wasn't enough, you also get to go platinum to Starcast. You'll love a platinum bracelet and you get every official meet and greet. Even the stuff that's sold out, you get it for $0. You don't have to worry about buying a bunch of food either. We've got you an eat and greet lined up for all your meals. So instead of just having lunch or breakfast or dinner with your slap dick buddy, you can do it with. Brutus, the fucking barber beefcake or road warrior animal or Kevin Sullivan or Ron Simmons or whoever. And Tony, this might be the best of all. Not only do you get the VIP access for the after party, which is sold out. You can't buy it. You get front row tickets to all in. Wow. Holy shit. I mean, that's, it's unfathomable that you would be able to get front row tickets to all in, but you can hear. And the only play, the only way to go ahead and make this happen is to pre-order Starcast on fight. And what's great about doing that is you get 40 hours of content. You get 20 live shows. You get to watch them on demand and you get all of that for under a hundred bucks at fight.tv forward slash Starcast. But as long as you do it by the 27th, you're good to go. You're entered in the drawing and we're going to have the drawing live on Twitter. Uh, we'll post a link where you can watch us do it live at Starcast 18. So Go snag your pre-order right now before it's too late and then tune on the 27th and somebody, by the way, this is global, Tony, somebody can from freaking England could win and, and wrestling travel is going to cover their airfare all wow. the way over here. How nuts is that? Well, let me say this and you know how sh- uh, Tony Shivani overhyped shit. Yeah. This is the WrestleMania of independent wrestling. Oh, what for this sure. is. Oh, for sure. It's the biggest night in the history of our great sport. Yes, it is. And and there'll be plenty of butts in the seats. And if you win, you can have your butt in the front row. How about that? Hard to beat, man. It's the ultimate star cast and all in experience. Check it out right now. Fight.tv forward slash star cast. Uh, it is a great value, a bunch of shows. And before we clicked record today, Tony, you and I talked not about botch mania, which will be hilarious with you and Cassio kid and Ron Funches and Matthew, but instead. We talked about what happened when live, and this will be the first time you and I have done a live show together without Bruce Pritchard fucking interfering. Mm. 
and we have ran through a list of things we want to do on this show. And I guess the rest of our speak is we're going to get all our shit in. <laughs> we are going to get all our shit in. And, uh, that's a lot of shit to get in. It is. If you're a long time listener to the show and you're not coming to Starcast and you're not watching this, what the hell is wrong with you? Watch it on fight. If you can't be there, because we have, we're pulling out all the stops. You know, I know Tony likes matches where there's a lot of psychology. Uh, I booked this one and this is high spot after high spot after high spot after high. If you're a long time listener, you don't want to miss it. Fight.tv forward slash Starcast. And something I didn't want to miss as a kid, man, SummerSlam 1989. I'm excited for us to cover this one. I feel like we uh, need to jump right to it. If we can wake her up, find her, get her around, we'll get a countdown and we'll get going. Here she is, the one and only Lois Rules. The only reason you have me do this countdown is because you slapdicks are too stupid to count. Three, two, one, and say, hit play. What about this open here, Tony? The double S's. Yeah. The double S is the, uh, it, it, and you know, I, uh, I, I'm going to say something about my career here, 31 years of age and, uh, being able to do this with Jesse, the body Ventura. You think I'm not excited? You're 31. Th- that's 31 right there. That's eight 31. It sure is. Wow. Yeah. We'll, we'll turn 32 in November of that year. And, uh, but I, I'm at the Meadowlands. I'm working with Jesse, the body Ventura. When I was told that I was going to be doing this, I went, holy shit. Holy shit, man. Big deal. And of course, now I'm being produced by Bruce Pritchard here in my ear. Stage manager. Here's another little note. Stage manager is Kevin Dunn, who is now running everything production wise, but he was counting me in and out being the stage manager there. And I was just overhyped. I wanted to take a, a couple of notices here. As everybody's watching the SummerSlam open, got some inside information for you. They like to put wrestling with summertime. So that's uh, Stephanie and... Uh, that's Vince's house. Yeah, Vince's house and Stephanie and uh, and Shane hopping in the pool. I don't think that was Shane. It wasn't Shane? No, I don't think that so. That was Stephanie, though. That was definitely Stephanie. Right. Emily Feinberg, Vince's longtime secretary. For a long time. Yes. Uh, Bruce Pritchard, eating ice cream. I love you for that. Yeah. It, uh, uh, Pat, Pat gave him an ice cream cone. He licked it. Uh, I'm not so sure who this is, but that looks pretty darn good. I bet Vince knew. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he, <laughs> I'm sure he did. Uh, that's Bruce in the, uh, on the playground. That's Kevin Dunn right there swinging a golf club. And of course that's the American dream dusty roads. So we're celebrating summer with SummerSlam 1989. One of Vince's many kids, probably. And maybe another one right that, there. That was Kofi Kingston. Okay. <laughs> That's Lita. <laughs> Summer Slam. Yes, sir. Feel the heat. And, uh, you know, this all, this, this event, and you're going to, the, the fans were really into this. This event was centered on the, the movie. Uh, and it was Hulk Hogan. And Brutus, the barber beefcake going up against the macho man, Randy Savage and Zeus, tiny Lister. Uh, we need to say something here as the heart foundation comes in about, uh, Jim, the anvil Nightheart, who passed away this week. Yeah. It's, um, I was sort of the, the guy who said, Hey man, why don't we talk about SummerSlam 89 and we had said before we were going to cover a Brian Pillman show, just you and I, I don't think we had announced that, but when you said why SummerSlam 89, what happened to Brian Pillman? And I was like, well, I just wanted to have a reason to talk about Nodhart. And you said, why? I don't guess the news had made it to the Gwinnett stripers yet, but we lost one of the all time greats. One of the most iconic characters in my childhood. And I know, uh, you know, a lot of people get super sentimental and emotional whenever somebody dies and, you know, try to put it over however, but as a kid, man, I got to tell you, the heart foundation was one of the first tag teams that made an impression on me for two reasons. I liked that Brett gave away the sunglasses, but I didn't really like Brett otherwise. Right. And then Jim, the anvil Nightheart was like, 
a fat guy who could kick ass, but had that crazy goatee and that, that unreal laugh. And so that right. as a kid is what I gravitated to. Now, years later, I started to appreciate, you know, the craft of wrestling. And then, you know, it's obvious Brett is the big star, but as a little kid, the anvil was the man. Well, this is what I remember. And I, and I guess this is because when I started, you and I have talked about the career of Bret Hart and everybody you know, talks about Brett being one of the great wrestlers of all time. To me, he was a tag team wrestler, right? He was the heart foundation. That was Brett Hart. And that's the way I guess I started. And, uh, uh, that's the, I, one of the interesting things as we were talking right there, Conrad, the entrances, look how much the entrances have changed in the WWE since then. Arn and Tully come running in, just jogging in with their belts on around the side. And now it's all this lit up lights flashing over the top entrances. And it made me think here a little bit about entrances. Really? How are so? They, are they overdone? Oh, I see. And in, in other words, I understand it, but here's, here's my question. I'm going to be very philosophical here about wrestling lights, camera action. They come out all. And I mean, the entrances in the WWE now are unbelievable. Oh yeah. Okay. But when they get to the ring, as we like to say, then the bell rings, right? Maybe that's one of the problems they got now. Maybe the, what's in the, the product in the ring is not as good as the entrance. Just a question. And I know I'm old school. And of course now here, the brain busters and Bobby, the brain Heenan, my longtime good friends, and even Bobby Heenan, my good friend. And, uh, it, it, it's amazing how, how many people have passed on and, uh, you know, Tully and Arn were in their element here. I mean, this was, uh, they were just right out of the four horsemen deal and they came in and, uh, Arn is just, Arn can just do so many great things. Yeah. Th this match, if you want to be a tag team wrestler is one of those to me, you could just watch Arn Anderson in this. And this is about as good as it gets. If you were to give wrestlers ratings, like in Madden, where they go like out of a hundred, Arn, his tag attribute is a hundred mm -hmm. here. Right. I mean, and so that all go, all goes back to wrestling psychology. And it's one of the reasons that he's an agent right now. Yeah. But I think well, a lot of people, you know, especially my age, they think about Arn and they think of like 1997, 1998 Arn. I don't know that people really think about Arn, not as the, the, my spot guy and all that but as this guy and right. this guy here, I mean, it's worth mentioning here. He's 30 years old as you're watching him in this match. This is the peak to me of Arn Anderson. I agree. And, uh, it, it's funny. A lot of people don't, a lot of people don't remember this. A lot of WCW people don't remember this. Uh, and I guess that's just those who started watching wrestling back in the nineties. I I've had a lot of, uh, a lot of social media, uh, responses that said, my God, you did SummerSlam 89 and Holy shit. Arn and Tully were on SummerSlam 89. It's like, it's, it's a part of history that kind of maybe slipped by them because I didn't stay there long. And realistically they didn't either. By the way, uh, Bruce Pritchard recently put you over saying that, uh, he thought you did a great job on this show on commentary. Well, I, I appreciate that. And you know, he was a pretty good producer to be honest with you, if I can put his ass over here and, and here's why he was a good producer. He never interfered with what you were saying and he didn't talk down to you and he didn't make you feel like, oh, you made a big mistake. He always, he was like a, kind of like a coach. In many ways, it was very good at this. Look at Tony I, scooting over and then doing the tag with the foot. That was so right. good. Such classic stuff, man. Underrated. You know, uh, there's, there's a debate and a lot of New York guys. I mean, even, even Bruce and Bruce is mostly doing it just to piss me off, <laughs> but there is a debate about where the brain busters and of course that's the name that Arn and Tully were going by here ranking the all time tag team list. Some of my, my WCW, my NWA, my mid Atlantic fans, 
they've got Arn and Tully up there with the Midnights and the Rock and Rolls and the Road Warriors and the Steiners on that all time list. And then there's some WWF apologists like Bruce Pritchard who, who say, and I'm sure Bruce in my case is just saying it to piss me off because he knows I'm a mark for these guys, but he says, um, oh yeah, they weren't that good. I mean, they couldn't cut it the big time. Hmm. And you look at this match and you're like, what the fuck ever. So chat me up. Where do you think Arn and Tully rank all time? All time. You're talking about in the WWE or just in pro wrestling in general in wrestling. Oh yeah. They are. They're one of the top. They're one of the top 10 tag teams in, in pro wrestling. Uh, but still, if you think about Arn and Tully, I, I think about guys who I think about Tully who's wearing a robe. I think about guys who were showed off how much money and how many, many women they got had that gimmick compared to there's two guys with just running out with, with belts on. I don't think their characters came through here. And I think a lot of that was because now they're with Heenan and Heenan is the driving force behind their interviews, not them and behind their gimmick. So as Arn and Tully, they were great as the brain busters, not so much. You know, it's kind of fun. We've, we've talked about this before. What if? There was a four horsemen in the WWF. And we mentioned this because flair nearly came uh, over at jump ship and SummerSlam 88, the original idea when they announced the brother love show on SummerSlam 88 was that Ric flair would be the big guest. And they were hyping up this big mystery guest. It was supposed to be Ric flair. Of course, Rick got cold feet. Didn't want to make a change and maybe um, had leveraged himself a little bit with Crockett and felt like he couldn't leave. So as a result, brother love show in 88 on SummerSlam just became about hacksaw, Jim Duggan. And it was a throwaway segment, nothing to it, but what if, and so we've sort of kicked that around and it is interesting to me that JJ Dillon is going to be here. Not too terribly long after that. And we've covered right. you know, his departure. Arn and Tully are here. Yep. Barry Windham showed up in June of 89, just a couple months prior to this. Yes. So if Rick had come over at SummerSlam 88 and Barry was here in 89 and you see Arn and Tully are already here. If they didn't want to bring JJ on camera and just let him be office. Technically Bobby Heenan would have had a stable of the four horsemen. How fucking insane would that be? That would have been insane, but that would Vince, Vince would not go for something like that. He doesn't like factions or he didn't at this time, but he loved him eight years later, I guess. in 97, right? He didn't love him. Plus Conrad. And here's the underlying thing. I don't think Bruce has brought this up by bringing the horseman over and forming, forming the horseman here. He would have acknowledged Jim Crockett promotions. Well, but in fairness. He does a couple of years after this SummerSlam 91, you see Bobby Heenan show up with the big gold belt. So right. they are sort of acknowledging in them there when they show, when they show the belt. Now, of course they're trying to get over at Jim Crockett's expense, but right. still the belt is there. Yeah. Well, and of course now, uh, yeah, that's true. And, and that was just, uh, I guess we're saying the same thing, just sticking it up the ass of. Turner Broadcasting and Jim Crockett Promotions. Here he feels that I just knew I, I in the short period of time I worked for Vince, I, I understood uh, that he wanted to take guys and make them his own instead of make them something that has been done in the past. That's why you know you saw Mark Callis become the Undertaker, uh, and he would take guys and make them stars. Uh, he, th- he was a superstar making machine. So, you know, he just, uh, I, th- that's why they came running out and they, they weren't the, uh, you know, the playboys that they portrayed at Jim Crockett promotions in the midst, man, we're, we're seeing some, we're seeing some great tag team wrestling going on here. If you haven't watched this one, man, this is a great opening to a show, isn't it? Oh, it is. And by the way, the observer is not posted from 1989 or at least not this issue. So mm-hmm. we're going with the torch and Wade Keller. 
uh, gave this uh, match grade a B. He says, uh, this was a steadily paced opener that was satisfying. However, maybe a bit too long. It's going to go 14 minutes. He gives it a B. Okay. Uh, 14 minutes is probably a little bit longer than most, uh, WWE fans or WWF fans back then is, is uh, Bruce Mitchell, a part of Wade Keller stuff. Uh, kinda. Yeah. I mean, he, he's, he does stuff on the torch. But right. he, he's the opinion guy. He's not the, uh, the news breaking guy, or at least that's yeah. been my experience with Bruce. I like Bruce Mitchell. And I know that, I know that, um, Bruce Pritchard does not Bruce Pritchard calls right. Bruce Mitchell a jack off from Greensboro. Wow. Okay. A lot of jack offs from Greensboro. Uh, that's, that's quite an, uh, it's quite a, a nod. Well, where are you at I, uh, on Bruce Mitchell? Do you think he's a jack off or are you a fan? No, I, you know, I, I, I was, I was trying to, you know, I was trying to shit on him because I did a, an interview on their, I guess on their website or podcast with he and Wade recently. And, um, and Bruce was okay. You know, just a, you know, a dick lick from Greensboro. Oh, okay. I got it. Okay. But there you go. So anyway, so it's good to, that we're uh, checking the, the pro wrestling torch, you know, uh, Wade Keller used to shit on me too. That's okay. Everybody's got their opinion. I don't know what wow. to say about Bruce and Wade. I'll, I don't know Wade as much as I know Bruce. Whenever I, I'm in the same room as Bruce, uh, we're hanging. I like Bruce a lot. Okay. Well, I, good. I, I don't think I've ever met Wade in real life, but I, I will at Starcast. He's going to be there. Wow. Well, he started doing this as just a kid pro wrestling torch. Well, I don't think he's had a bunch of hard living. He has an age like you have. Well, way who? I don't think I've aged that badly at all. Dude, let me just tell you, Wade Keller never woke up with jalapeno stuck to the back of his head. He never got Wade called. Keller. He yeah. never got called down to Flair's room at three in the morning. Shivani, come look at this. Yeah. Wade Keller never went out drinking with Barry Windham and Ric Flair. And that's why. That's absolutely why. Look at that great reaction shot by Heenan. Man, they, they, they were on top of their game. Uh, uh, and now, of course, Kerwin Silfie's the director here. Again, Kevin Dunn is, is not the producer. He is the, uh, he's a stage manager here, which if you think about what Kevin Dunn's become, it's kind of highly unusual. Meanwhile, just great tag team wrestling going on here. Wow. And Wade's probably right. It's probably a little bit too long, but... They do a great job of showing Heenan and the reactions and him pointing and everything. And, uh, just great. There's a uh, gorilla monsoon son of Joey, of course, who died tragically in a car wreck. Yeah. It's unfortunate. You know, I, I don't think, you know, when you look at this group, you would think that it would be the referee and Jim Neidhart and Bobby Heenan would all be gone, you know, just 19 yeah. years later. Yeah, well, 19 years later, 29 years later. By the way, I guess it's worth mentioning Arn and Tully, uh, with one of these old tag belts and their NWA tag belts going to be at Starcast. You can do a promo. It looks like the old TBS set or the heel locker room with uh, Sean Mooney or Tony Schiavone. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hold the phone. Arn Anderson's coming to Starcast. Yeah. Well, that motherfucker. What's wrong? That, you don't, you that don't, motherfucker. You don't like Arn? Well, I love Arn, but he never, well, he and I talk, he never talks about it. I tried to get him on my radio show and he said, oh, I don't know if I can do that, but he can do Starcast. Hey, don't fuck with the gimmick. Well, okay. I won't fuck with the gimmick, but I am anyway, I've, I've got to have a, I've got to have a come to Jesus meeting with Marty Lundy. You know, just for the record, I, I've never been asked to be on this radio show. You were on the radio show. Yeah. I just called in as a caller. just forced my way in, but that was being on. No, I understand. But he got asked. I just bombarded. I just barged in. Oh, okay. Like I called in the hotline and they were mm -hmm. like, what's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm Conrad from Huntsville. <laughs> it's not true. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> That's not your life. And I, and I said, <laughs> I got a question. Why don't they turn Roman Reigns heel? <laughs> He's a heel. 
They can get him over if he just turned heel. They don't know what they're doing up there. That stock ain't worth but about a hundred. I bought that shit in this fourteen. It's only a hundred. You hear me? I ain't made but eighty six percent of my money in nineteen days. I need more, and I can get it if old if old Roman Reigns would hold the tights when he rolled somebody up. Put his damn feet on the middle rope. Then he's a bad guy. Why don't he reach into his trunks, pull out folded paper that's been fashioned like brass knuckles that J.J. Dillon made in the back about 20 minutes before he came out, and hit that some bitch right in the mouth. Then he's a bad guy. That'll get him over. Thank you for calling Conrad of Huntsville. What do you think about that, Bo? Well, I think he's right. Uh, I think he's right. And then, of course, it comes back to us, and everybody falls asleep. And that's why we're not on the air anymore right now. I love this. Aaron trying to cover up who he is, mm -hmm. makes the cover, but uses his two arms and Brett's limp arm to cover his head. So you can't see the flesh colored yarmulke. And you can believe just for a second that he's totally blanchard because you can't see the hair color. One, <laughs> two, three, your winners and still world wrestling federation tag team champions, the brain busters. And they just walk right on out where the New Jersey Devils used to play. And uh, uh, again, let's take a look. He, I think it was good. again a, just a great finish here. Here it comes using the hair <laughs> cover up the bald spot. And they fooled the referee, didn't they? Fooled everybody on that. But it was the little thing of not just covering, but getting your head down and trying to completely cover your head. So the ref couldn't see your hair. So he wouldn't, he wouldn't know that you weren't the legal man. Cause technically Arn was not the legal man there. Tully was. Yeah. It's, it's the small things. It's look at this. Well, the American dream dusty roads with us, a uh, uh, dusty. What about them polka dots? They can put polka dots on me all they want. They can do anything they want all they want. And it may make me look a little bit fatter than I really am. But I'm still the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. I am still the tower power, too sweet to be sour. I'm the one who booked Jim Crockett promotions into money. Do you think they were making money before I got there? Shit. They weren't making any money before I got there. And now here I am. And they're back at Turner Broadcasting looking for somebody to book. And they go bring in George Scott. Yeah, he ain't going to last long because I am a creative genius. That's what I am, a creative genius. And here I am with polka dots on, and they say, Dusty Rhodes ain't going to wear polka dots. Bullshit, man. Dusty Rhodes will wear anything at all because what it's about is making money, honey, and being funky like a monkey. That's exactly right. And I'll put them over, too. There's my million-dollar smile. Shocked well, the fuck out of me when I saw him in polka dots. We can roll credits. So we're not going to beat that. You know what's funny is, in the torch year back then, they had a segment where they just like quoted mm -hmm. and Tony Schiavone has a quote here that makes mm -hmm. the torch dusty polka dots and all is back up. Like you just, <laughs> it's like the guy you grew up on seeing him in polka dots was fucking blowing your mind. Yeah. It, it as a shoot, it blew my fucking mind. And I've told the story before I'll tell it again because now that everybody hears everything that we, we do. Bruce Pritchard called me in his office. You know, he was a big shot behind a desk. Oh, of course. Yeah. Bruce Pritchard called me in his office. He said, I, I've got some news for you. Your friend is coming to board. I remember even saying it like that. I said, I don't have any friends. That's true. That's a shoot. Right, can I finish the antidote here? Anecdote here. So I said, he said, your friend is coming to board. And I said, who? He said, dream. I went, Dusty's coming here. He said, yeah. He said, we're going to put him in polka dots. And you know how Bruce is when Bruce looks at you, he's waiting for a he, reaction, right? He looks at you, at, but he, with Bruce and, and still today, and I know now today he's much older and much fatter, uh, but he, he has that look to where you don't know if he's ribbing you or not. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, right. He said, I'm serious. I said, no, you, I said, bullshit. He said, I'm serious. He said, calling. I said, well, I'm going to, he said, yeah. He said, he's going to wear polka dots. I said, he's agreed to this, or this is an idea that you and Vince and Pat and all of you have So no, he's agreed to it. He's going to wear polka dots. I said, well, we know what polka dots do. Don't we? It makes you look fatter. He said, it is a gimmick that is going to get over. We promise you because dusty can make it work. 
So I called Dusty and I was too scared to say, Hey buddy, are you really going to fucking wear polka dots? <laughs> I just couldn't say it. And damn it. He did. He got it over. Yes, he did. Hey, you know what? I- I've got something to tell you. I haven't told you. Okay. We are going to have a section of dusty memorabilia. Oh my God. On loan from the family at Starcast. Oh, oh my God. I'm being serious. Well, I know you are. And, and I, I've just got, I've, I've got to, I've got, okay. See the marks coming out here now. <laughs> Forget about Tony Schiavone, uh, wrestling announcer, the marks coming out. I've got to have my picture taken with some of that memorabilia. Here's what's cool, man. Oh man. Every show from 85, for instance, we got his whole booking book here. Everything really? he did. We've got the original, like brochure for Starcade 84. We've got an award from Florida championship wrestling. We've got, um, like the Jim Crockett promotions book with his name on it, that he kept everything in the daily calendar, the hat that he wore even here in, uh, the WWE or F it was like the top hat with like the Turkey claw and flipping through these pages, man. I mean. It's just page after page of history. Uh, and he mushes up the hair of the honky tonk man. <laughs> Good. And they had a great shot of it. They always did. Current selfies ahead of his time. Uh, I'm getting emotional here now, Conrad. We're going to have really the, the midnight rider outfit. Oh, uh, the full one, you know, the mask, the jacket, right. the whole deal. Of course, his actual world title, the big gold belt. Uh, his nameplate that was made especially, especially for the belt. But by the time the nameplate actually came in, Dusty was no longer champ. So it was never on TV, but Cody's kept it all these years. The uh, belt buckle that Paul Bosch had made for him when yeah. uh, he became world champion. Right. I mean, just some really, really classic icon and that belt buckle I was told is the one he wore like every day. I mean, even up in till the end of NXT. So you probably saw the belt buckle, the thunder and all that. Sure did. Saw the belt buckle a lot, man. Uh, God almighty. I'm getting emotional here. I really am. Uh, here's why I'm getting emotional here because he was such a big part. Like they go, well, show the ass with the, with the polka dots. Let's show his big ass with those polka dots. Give me a shot of that. Vince probably called for that shot. Um, uh, because not only because he was such a, a big star, but he was, I was such a big dusty Rhodes fan before I got to know him. And then I got to know him and then I got to travel with him. It, a lot of times it was just me and dusty in a car together, riding somewhere to TV or back from TV. Uh, and that's why I'm very emotional about this just because I feel a connection to him and his family. Um, and that's why me not being able to be a part of all in is, is horrible. Well, I mean, you're going to be there. Yeah. You, you'll be in town. Uh, we got to get a photo op with you and Cody and, yeah. uh, some of this memorabilia because you're going to see him the day before he challenges. I mean, maybe the most important match of his life. I mean, mm-hmm. he's had a lot of big moments, a lot of WWE pay-per-views, a lot of big moments over in Japan, a lot of big matches with ring of honor. I mean, his feud with, uh, Kenny Omega, where they had the, the match for ring of honor WrestleMania weekend. And then of course, out at the cow palace this year for new Japan, just tons of big matches, but you got to think if he's successful and wins the NWA world title, I think it'd be the first second generation guy first father son combo and who better than dusty and Cody Rhodes. I know that it's not popular to just be a homer and cheer for your boys, but I'm hoping Cody gets the win over Nick Aldis. What a moment that would be. Yeah. I, I, I think about this and I, and I think about this when we talk about star cancer, when we talk about all in, uh, you know, dusty's not been, uh, uh, gone that long, but how proud would he be of, of what Cody has done? for this weekend and what you've done for this weekend. Well, I don't know that he would be proud of what I've done, but he would certainly be proud of what Cody's done. And 
if I, if I knew better, I mean, if I know, I, I never met dusty, uh, except for one passing exchange in 04 and it was just a thank you, sir type deal. But, uh, you gotta think that dusty, even though he would have still worked for WWE, he would have found a way to get himself on this all in show. There's no chance no he was not going to be on camera for this. Right. There's no question. Just, uh, I just, mm. Oh, by the way, uh, the rumor and innuendo. Oh boy. Is that, um, well, I don't want to give a spoiler. I was just going to say <laughs> that what there may don't, or don't. may, there may or may not be, um, what dusty don't. spirit will be at all in. How's that? It's going to be, it's okay. gonna, if you're an old school wrestling fan, it's going to be fucking awesome. You're going to pop. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Your spirit's always around, man. And I, I viewed this, I viewed this as I didn't know to view this as again, dusty made it work. Right. But do you see this as them trying to shit on the American dream, dusty roads? What with the polka dots? Yeah. Well, listen, I mean, I think a lot of people assumed that this was a rib and this was a way to just shit on him because they certainly did when they named Mike Jones, who uh, Virgil, I mean, to me, when, when you've got Virgil and you've got Akeem, the African dream, and he's dancing, doing his, you know, moves right. like dusty does. Right. I think if you didn't know any better, you would think that, oh man, they're mocking African culture and African Americans. It's like, no, they're not. They're mocking uh, a fat white guy from Texas. Like mm-hmm. they're mocking dusty Rhodes. So the African dream Akeem is clearly a rib on dusty. No matter what anybody says. And Virgil being named Virgil is clearly a rib on dusty. No matter what anybody says. So I think this, a lot of people thought, well, here's another one. They're ribbing dusty, but in fairness, dusty got it over. So, yeah, who, so he, who's he ribbing who now? Right. And you know, Vince knew he would get it over because Hell, he knew Dusty from back in the day when Dusty worked for his dad, you know, brought him in as, you know, they brought Dusty Rhodes in kind of like the way everybody else brought Andre the Giant in. That, that, that Dusty Rhodes was a special attraction. I feel like I should mention here that uh, Andre made the news, and we'll get to that in a minute. But this match in the torch, he was doing ratings here based on letters, not stars. What, what letter do you think he gave Honky Tonk Man and Dusty Rhodes? I would think, uh, knowing how everybody that did dirt sheets hated dusty roads, they gave it a C minus. They gave it a D. Okay. Uh, the second match saw dusty roads, pin honky tonk man and a pretty poor bout. Dusty was decked out in polka dots. The fans love dusty roads who has really found his niche in the WWF. Dusty's elbow ended it at 10 minutes. He gave it a D. Hmm. Yeah, they, 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 the, the dirt sheet guys are just not going to put Dusty over. Not at all. I mean, saying that he found his niche maybe is a way of putting him over, but he's not going to do it. Honky Tonk Man was an underrated performer as well. You know, Honky Tonk had legitimate heat with people. And I, I thought that was, I, that, that's just, to me, a sign of being a good heel. Right. I, I told you the story that uh, Leisha Murphy, who's no longer with us, was my assistant producer doing videos. She hated the honky tonk man, hated him. And I said, well, you know what? Then he's doing a hell of a job. <laughs> he really is. And I loved the rhythm and blues. I loved when <laughs> look at the big pop. The fans got for that guitar shot. And the referee comes to just the right time. One, two, three, but I love the rhythm and blues. When Greg Valentine dyed his hair black, I thought that was tremendous. I want to mention here, I sort of teased it a minute ago. Uh, it was written in the torch. The news hit the wire the day after the, uh, the last issue, Andre, the giant had been arrested for assaulting a cameraman at ringside at Cedar Rapids on August 21st. Andre had just been defeated by the ultimate warrior in less than 30 seconds. And after the bout, he noticed a camera at ringside and confronted the cameraman demanding to have the camera saying he couldn't film the match. The cameraman was aware of that match and only filmed crowd reactions. Andre didn't know that and ended up damaging the camera and the cameraman. 
He was released on $1,200 bond on charges of assault and criminal mischief. The incident got a lot of press and the WWF was said to be happy with the publicity. USA Today TV and Entertainment Tonight both briefly mentioned the story. Andre, meanwhile, is still trying to protect his ego by stopping any filming of the matches he's losing. Do you remember this? Not at all. Uh, but protecting his ego? How about just protecting the business? Yeah, roll title now. How about Dusty Rhodes here with the nightstick, the cop hat, getting funky like a monkey? Yeah, and, and you know, I, one of the things I thought was cool out of this, and that it, it's old-fashioned wrestling stuff, they, uh, Sean Mooney was doing an interview with the honky tonk man right there. Just absolutely ignored that. He lost as if he won heels lie about what you just see and keep on going, man. That's being a great heel. Wow. What a, what, what a crowd at this Meadowlands arena. Just, uh, just a spectacular night. Well, look take at a look shit. at this. Look at Number. this shit right here. All right, here we are with, uh, what are you guys' names? Oh, we are, uh, demolition. I am the ax and he is the smasher and the demolition is fucking disaster. And speaking of disaster, look right behind us. It's Hacksaw Jim Duggan in a fucking hockey mask. How about that? Motherfucker. How many gimmicks have I had in my career? I was a fucking Russian. Uh -huh. I was a repo man. <laughs> That's right. I was a black top bully and now I painted my face like a road warrior. Let's hear from Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Jim. Ho! tough guy. I've got a lot of snot under here, but not a lot of wrestling talent. And I'll see you in the ring in just a minute. And then right after that, I'm going to go smoke. We need cheeseburgers with ah, tuh, the iron Sheik. Ho! What a fucking group. Ducking in, ducking in a hockey mask. Man, how uh, fucking cool was Mr. Perfect here? Uh, uh, by the way, he that pulling the ear gimmick was for somebody at home, probably his special lady. Yeah, God bless him too. One of the great rivers of all time. And how about this? That he would start in the ring. I like in it. the ring. That yeah, works I for me. Too. You know, in the ring was usually just for job guys. Speaking of job, Speaking guys. Of job guys. Yes. <laughs> yes. We both just could not wait to shit on him. Here he comes, uh, <laughs> s strutting and clucking or clucking and fucking sucking. Uh, here he comes the red rooster himself. And by the way, this match has become a topic of conversation with Bruce and I very early on in our podcast run where I said that Terry Taylor had often thought he got a raw deal here because they had a, like a box of gimmicks in the office. Because perfect started or Kurt started around the same time as Terry and Kurt pulled Mr. Perfect. Meanwhile, Terry got stuck with the red rooster and Terry was sort of freestyling how his career could have been different. Had he gotten the Mr. Perfect character and Kurt gotten the red rooster. And of course, what? Bruce was incredulous at this idea and said, there is no fucking box of gimmicks. We didn't just have a whole list of characters. And I sort of pushed back on that. And I said, well, you did tell DBIC that you had an idea for a gimmick and you wanted him to do it, but you couldn't tell him what the gimmick was until he signed. And allegedly when they were talking to Jake, the snake Roberts, he says, Hey, here's what I want you to do. Uh, you know, get these tights on and these snake skin boots and carry a snake to the ring. And when Jake sort of pushed back, he said, well, that's cool. Uh, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to, but I'm hiring a guy here to wear these tights and snakeskin boots and carry a snake to the ring implying motherfucker. If it ain't you, it's going to be somebody else. Cause I right. like the idea and I'm going with it. Right. So in theory, there were a set of gimmicks that were yeah, going to be assigned to someone, but Terry Taylor, of course, is like, what if I was Mr. Perfect? And of course, Bruce would say, well, then Kurt would have gotten over the red rooster and it wouldn't have been a joke. Mr. Perfect would have been a joke instead. Yeah, that, that's probably, that's probably right. Because Kurt was a, was a better performer than, uh, than Terry Taylor. Um, but it's not to say that Terry wasn't a good performer because he was, uh, 
I don't I don't buy this box the reach into the box and pull it, it almost sounds like they pulled out gimmicks they pulled out names is that what Terry was saying well I don't think he was insinuating it was like a lottery he's just saying like they had like this almost card catalog of gimmicks like mm. hey we got all these ideas and here's a talented wrestler we could give him this one we could give him that one and for whatever reason they had these two ideas around the same time and and here we go mm. By yeah, the way, I'm, not, the, I'm not so sure. Of course, sure it's all that. make believe. Terry Taylor lied. Imagine that. Um, yeah, the match gets a D here in the mm. in the torch. It saw a very good series of fast moves in the opening minutes, followed by a perfect plex to end it. Rooster was limping after the bout, so he may have called for a quicker finish than originally planned, or he may have just what? been selling and you're overthinking it. Yeah, three minutes yeah, on pay per view, and he's out. Well, the, the fact is that Terry did have a, a knee injury that he had, that he has had been nursing for quite a while. I think he had knee surgery. If I recall, maybe I'm not sure before or after this, but the fact is, you know, Terry Taylor for, for all that he may be saying about the gimmick, he's had a very long career in wrestling. He works in NXT now as a trainer. Oh no. Listen, by the way, he's a great guy. He's super. We just love, I mean, I love busting his balls, but I met him at cauliflower rally a few years ago. Couldn't have been nicer. Yeah. Yeah, he's absolutely nice. There's a the perfect plex, and there's your winner, Mr. Perfect. But he was and certainly, the man who's certainly jobbing getting guys over here. It's a pay per view match, and he's he's out in three minutes. Yeah, that's fine. And but still, and what I what I think is cool is the guy who started in the ring without the entrance gets the win. Almost like the opposite of what you expect from enhancement talent. Exactly. Matches. Exactly. Rooster got the big strutting and cutting, but then he got his ass pinned. Yeah. Did, do you remember the Mr. Perfect videos where he bowled a 300 and did all that stuff? Yeah. Bruce shot those. Oh, I'm sure he did. I'm, I was getting ready to, to ask you, does Bruce take credit for all that shit? Of course he does. Of course he does. He's Bruce Pritchard. He's the king of the podcasting world. Whoa, 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 whoa. What the fuck am I? The queen. Oh, fuck. Sorry. You. Fuck hey, Survivor you. Series is coming up. The Thanksgiving night tradition, November 23rd. Tony Schiavone is not going to be a part of it. No holes barred. That's what we're all talking about here. Conrad Zeus and the uh, Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Something just came to my brain. No holes barred was not a good movie. Oh, fuck off. It was a great movie. By the way, this is the famous skit where the sign falls. Right. And mean Gene cusses, but I'm pretty yeah, sure they don't show that here on camera. No, they're not going to show it here, but they rolled it in. Uh, the story is they rolled it in and they rolled it in because of Rob Wright, Huey, who would go on to WCW fame and be a fuck up there as well. Rob Wright queued up the wrong pre-tape and played the, the version and the summer sign, summer slam sign falls down and Gene says, fuck it. And it aired. So they come back to me and Jesse, the body Ventura and Bruce Pritchard says, and I could tell there was panic in his voice. He says, Jesse, Jesse, you need to react to that. You need to say something about it. Uh, and just try to make it sound something. And he said, ha, I'm glad that sign fell down. I wish you would hit that old ball head in the back of the head or something like that. And that was Jesse reacting to it. So, uh, again, I remember what happened thinking, oh, what the fuck am I going to say? And Bruce and Jesse bailed me out. By the bailed way, us all out. I had that, uh, rockers poster. Actually, I didn't. My, one of my best friends had that rockers poster. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's funny because you go back and you see some of the things that you remember from your childhood and some of those really jump out. Like I had, um, that Steiner brothers poster that had like a yellow background like that. That was really over at the time. Look at this really simplistic gear. Sean Michaels has an S M on his chest and it's clear. They just drew an S and an M with a stick of glue, some Elmer's glue, and then just dropped like some, uh, some glitter over it. Hardest working man in show business. Just changed his gimmick. Jimmy Hart, who was out earlier with the different colors on and the honky tonk man comes out with the, uh, uh, the, what were they called here? The, well, the Rougeaus. I was thinking of the Quebecers, but the Rougeaus and here, my, one of my favorite managers of all time, slick, <laughs> fucking slick. 
man. Can I just tell you that, uh, Jimmy Hart in 2018 is still the most shameless promoter there ever was. How's that? <sighs> this past week, there was a wrestling con here in Huntsville, Alabama. I can't believe okay. that happened in Huntsville, but it did. And the promoters of that event decided to bring in Bruce Pritchard and they wanted to do a live something to wrestle. And I'm like, nay, nay, I can't be in my own hometown where I'm the mortgage man. Right. Talking about chocolate titties. I'm not doing that. <laughs> However, uh, if you book Bruce, I'll come and hold the microphone for fans to ask questions. And then it feels like we're both there, but I'm not talking into this microphone and saying the foul things that my listeners are used to. Right. In this environment. And so I said, okay, cool. So we get there and they're like, okay, it's just going to be you and Bruce. And I'm like, well, hang on now. Roadware animals sitting over there doing nothing. Jimmy Hart's mm. over there doing nothing. Let's put their ass in the ring. And then it'll, you know, be like a panel that I can throw to and ask questions with. So they like that idea. And road warrior agrees. He's a great guy, by the way, I've gotten to know him better. And, Ooh, road warrior animal. Oh, tremendous guy. He's a fucking turd, but go ahead. Okay. Fabe the HJ. And okay. then we had, um, Jimmy Hart. And so literally every question that comes in for Jimmy Hart or that I pose for Jimmy Hart. He turns it into a plug. Let me give you an example. Uh, Jimmy, it came out this week that, uh, Madison square garden was sold out for a wrestling show, but not a WWE show. You were there for a long time. What do you think Vince thinks about somebody like new Japan and ring of honor getting together to put on a show at Madison square garden, a and then B it's selling out as quickly as it did. And Jimmy would say, well, you know, baby, I tell you, I've been in wrestling a long time and I think that means it's good for business. And you know, everybody's all about wrestling. And that's why a lot of people are coming to Jimmy Hart's hall of fame bar and Tiki deck, you know, it's down there at the Mayan Inn, and it's right there on the beach in Daytona and we've got the NFL package. So if anybody here sees that maybe their favorite game, isn't going to be on TV. Well, you just come on down at Jimmy Hart's hall of fame, Tiki bar, uh, or bar and Tiki deck. Cause I got a big deck down there, uh, on the beach, right there on the beach, baby. And, and we've got tons of food Now I don't eat meat, baby. I just eat beans and taters, baby, but we've got meat down there and we don't have draft beer. Cause we can't have glass. Cause it's on the beach, but it's on the beach, baby. So you'll be drinking out of plastic, baby, but it's worth it. Cause you're on the beach. You hear me? You're on the beach. Anytime you're at Jimmy Hart's hall of fame bar and Tiki deck. And we've got Drake specials. On Monday nights and on Wednesday nights. Now, if you're a wrestling fan and you don't want to buy the pay-per-view, uh, you ain't got to have the WWE network because Jimmy Hart's hall of fame bar and Tiki deck has it. Now I got it with permission. Y'all so you can come down watch all the pay-per-views. I ain't got to spend no money. Just get in your car, drive about 13 hours, right down to Daytona beach, pull right in and come get you some of our beans and taters at Jimmy Hart's hall of fame bar and Tiki deck. That was the answer. No matter there. what the fuck I asked. <laughs> Hey, how, how does Vince feel about somebody else selling out Madison square garden? Man, he's almost <laughs> excited as I am every day at Jimmy Hart's hall of fame bar and Tiki deck. And, and look, a, look, y'all brother loves here. And guess what? We got brother loves picture up at Jimmy Hart's hall of fame bar and Tiki deck. Now, of course, Hulk Hogan's in the picture too. Cause I'm not contractually allowed to have any pictures of wrestling that don't have Hulk Hogan in it, baby. But I got road warrior. You're in it. And of course, Hawks in it. Well, and, and the Hulkster's in it now. Cause baby, if I'm going to have a picture up of wrestlers, they got to be wearing red and yellow. You know what I mean? Baby beans and taters, Hulk Hogan, come get it. <laughs> Jimmy Hart's hall of fame bar and Tiki deck is right there in Daytona <laughs> beach at the Mayan. Inn. It's on the beach, baby. Now you don't need no draft beer. Cause I got cans. You, you like cans. Of course you like cans. I got cans and, uh, you, you're right on the beach, baby. And I got the Monday night football package. Y'all ain't a football game on Jimmy Hart. Ain't got, I got raw. I got SmackDown. I got the underground Lucha. I got the wrestling of honor. I got the Japan new pro. I, I, and, and I got WWE pay-per-views, but you ain't got to come out of the pocket for all that money. No, sir. Not at Jimmy Hart's hall of fame bar and Tiki deck. Dude, fucking every question he got, we started counting the plugs at one point. We were 30 minutes in and he had answered it six times in a row. And one guy said, Hey man, you've got a hall of fame resume. You've managed everybody, literally everybody in the business. Who was your favorite to manage? 
man, my favorite place to manage was the hall of fame bar and Tiki deck right there in Daytona beach. I mean, that's where I've really had the most fun managing is at the Tiki deck. What did I just say? I said, we need to go to the Tiki bar. Is that what I'm going to say again? Or no, no, no. I'm just going to keep ranting about Jimmy Hart. Okay. All right. 4852. Count us down. Three, two, one. So as a heads up here, we had a bit of a technical issue. We were at, um, 48, 57, 58, 59, we're at 49 minutes right now. So if you'd like to catch up and catch up is what you'll have a chance to do at Jimmy Hart's famous bar and Tiki deck. It's at the Mayan Inn, dude, I'm telling you, it's like a full blown gimmick. And it's funny because I'm putting together a dungeon of doom photo op. Have I told you that? No, you haven't. Yeah. So we got the dungeon of doom getting back together for a photo op down there at Starcast, And I thought, man, maybe I should talk to Jimmy about him coming in and putting on the crazy jacket and he could be a part of that photo op. And then I realized that if I put him on a panel too, it would mm-hmm. be nonstop. It's sort of like me right now on every podcast is talking about Starcast. is Jimmy Hart right. every day about the Tiki deck. I tell you, we've got to go to the Tiki Deck. We've I'm got to in. Do a show there. I would love to do a show there, and I'm sure there's a picture of you there with Hulk Hogan in the picture too. But yeah. photoshopped. No, you had lots of times that you where you were with him, not here, but in WCW. Right. Absolutely. Hey, you know, uh, you know who's lost in all this stuff? Who's that? Yeah, uh, and it should be Tito Santana. Oh man, what an underrated performer. You know, we've talked about him a lot on Bruce's show and Bruce has even said that he was at least mentioned as being in that Bret Hart spot when they sort of transitioned from the big guys to the workers. And you know, there was a short list that once upon a time, Tito Santana was on. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I, I, he had the look, uh, I, I never. You know, they did a lot years ago with Pedro Morales in New York City and, and the and the big uh, Hispanic population and the, the Puerto Rican population in New York City. They they never did take advantage of Tito Santana, I thought. Now, I don't mean to gimmick him up and make it like a, you know, a over-the-top, like, Hispanic, funny-type thing. But, or if you want to use the word racist, but I, I just thought that they, they missed a boat with him. You know, it's and funny. we're blame Bruce Pritchard for that. The, uh, yeah, I mean, why not? He takes credit for everything. He can take a little blame every now and again. Right. There was a debate recently on the, um, wrestling observer message board about who could have been a great horseman. And of course people were just dumping all over you. And you suggested Brutus beefcake and I cussed at you, but one of the names that was mentioned there that I felt like I had slept on and not really considered was Rick Martell. Yeah. Rick Martell fit the mold of a horseman. Did he not? Sure. He did because. He was handsome, debonair, and he, he just, he probably would look great in a suit, man, with the sunglasses and a suit coming out. Absolutely. Oh, he did. When he was doing the model gimmick, we saw that a lot and yeah, he could have pulled it off for sure. And you know, imagine yeah. if instead of Paul Roma being that horseman, it would have been Rick Martell. Well, that, that sounds good. But what if people shit on it? Like they've shit on now, Paul Roma. Years I, later? I don't think so because you know. Rick Martell has a reputation of being a worker. And I'm not saying that Paul, uh, isn't a worker. I've always said that Paul was maybe criminally underrated, but you just don't think he's like Rick Martell. No, I, I think just the, the common, like the perception is what we're talking about. Like there is this perception that John Cena is a terrible wrestler, but then you go look at some of his really big matches. He's anything but terrible. Sure. And I mean, I understand just, that people, you know, they're just, they're quick to shit on things. I, I get it. And, and I, I we do it here on this show too, mm-hmm. but still, I think there is a difference between Rick Martell and Paul Roma, at least in the, in the minds of the fans. I guess I should mention here that, um, the match we're watching here is going to get a B and he says, uh, the finish was fantastic with a lot of close pinfalls. I was on the edge of my seat and really thought. The finish made this match. The bulk of the match was only average, but he gave it a B. Wow. That's, that's, that's pretty high praise. And here's another, uh, here's another really underrated performer. And that is Jacques Rougeau. You know, we've talked tremendous heat. We've talked about him a little bit, uh, in that his kid is a giant and a lot of people feel like 
maybe his kid is being hurt by being Jacques' son because for whatever reason, Jacques has heat. Why do you think Jacques has heat? Uh, because he was not easy to work with front office wise, booking wise. He had his own ideas and he didn't want to do this and he didn't want to do that. Uh, and probably sometimes, well, I would say more than sometimes probably went out to the ring and gave them the finish they wanted, but didn't do it the right way or didn't set it up the right way. Uh, and, and that once you get that man, once you get that in the business, you know, it's pretty tough to, to, to shake that one off. And it's a shame cause I always got along with Jacques and of course, Raymond Rougeau now is an announcer as one of the French announcers, right? Yeah. I'm, I don't know. Um, I don't know what else he does, but I know he has done some of that and yeah, well, they always go to the French announce team and Raymond Rougeau is one of them. What do you, what um, do you think, just, what, uh, what do you think that pays that pays? Oh, they probably get a, probably for doing the show, they get a grand, maybe a little bit more for WrestleMania and, and SummerSlam, but probably like a thousand dollars. I could find out easily. Are you, are you showing off right now? Yes, I am. <laughs> I can find out. I could text a motherfucker right now. I have you an answer. I have you a toe by no. two o'clock. I'll have you a toe by two. No, I'm not. Listen, I, I, I do not, uh, longtime international producer is my good friend, Tommy Carlucci and Tommy and I we do not talk shop. We, we always talk Yankees baseball. We always say, let's not talk wrestling. I'm not going to give you anything on my end. I don't want to hear anything happens going on with you. So I would never do that to Tommy. Let, uh, let me just That's suggest here for a minute. Okay. Um, you got to get the business internet. <laughs> By the way, uh, as we're taping this, we're taping this on a Wednesday morning, early as yeah. hell. And, uh, I guess you have just posted on the back end of Patreon, our Ravens mom parody, which maybe you heard at the top of the show. Maybe it's at the end of the show. Maybe it's not even in this show, but if you haven't heard Ravens mom, I think it's uh, well worth the price of admission over at patreon.com. Yeah, you know what they say, Raven's mom has got it going on. This was an idea you had, man, and we're just we just have fun with it. It's and funny our, because you know what? As soon as we finished last week, I said, "Hey, man, you ever heard the song Stacy's Mom?" And you're like, "No," and I play it for you, and then I think you recognized it, like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I know that one." Yeah, and uh, I made a suggestion, and I'll be damned. You came through, and Matt Coon mixed it up, uh, mixed it up for us, and. Here we go. You know what? <clears throat> I'd listened to this song, Stacy's mom, literally a hundred times, literally a hundred times, had it in the car, had it on my, uh, my, uh, iTunes. I downloaded it on iTunes. I just absolutely, absolutely love it. Uh, Christopher says Raven's mom parody was by far the funniest thing I've ever heard. JS says, just when I think y'all can't outdo yourself. Hashtag Raven's mom. That's it, man. It's uh, again, Conrad Thompson promoter of the year. Oh my God. Listen to this coming up with the, with the ideas that make everything tick. What do you think of Shawn Michaels back then as far as a performer? I mean, he wasn't the Shawn Michaels we know now, but he certainly was the, he was the Ricky Morton of the rockers, wasn't he? He was. And, and all the kids in my, um, in my neighborhood, they liked Shawn Michaels of the two, whenever we would be tag team wrestlers, cause you know, slap dicks going to slap dick. And so you know, we'd have couch matches in the living room or in the backyard or in the front yard or whatever, but there would always be two on two and. Uh, me and my buddy would always be the Steiner brothers. I'd be Rick Steiner for obvious reasons. And, mm -hmm. um, my friends would always be the rockers. And they always argued about who got to be Shawn Michaels. Mm. I don't know if Can that's because you? they knew that Sonny was going to be there or what, but <laughs> yeah, isn't it interesting too, that it feels like the star is always the blonde haired guy. I mean, you look at Ricky yeah. Morton and Robert Gibson, no disrespect to Robert Gibson or Marty Jannetty, but in both cases, what you just named was the blonde haired baby face. Well, yeah, 
why are a lot of the good looking women, uh, the, the ones in, in the WWE right now, here's the, I think the fantastic finish that he's talking about. And it was, and of course it takes a good referee to do it. Wow. Very well done. Why are all the beautiful women, not all of them, but the, like, uh, Mandy Rose, why are they blonde? Oh, that, I think you've got that miscategorized. Miscategorized. Are you going to pretend like Eva Marie didn't exist? No, Eva Marie was absolutely. Well, abs- absolutely. Here's a flashback. You know who Eva Marie is? I can't believe I was saying that thinking I was throwing you off. Yeah. But you know who that was? Well, wait a minute. Eva Marie. Yeah, I think I know who she is. How about, um, Rick rude beating the shit out of uh, macho man. I mean, not macho man, ultimate warrior. As a kid, I love this. Of Why course. did you love it? Do you hate the ultimate warrior? No, I'm just saying this was something that like these type of angles, I'm not saying I loved this moment in particular. I'm just saying like these type of angles, I was a huge ultimate warrior fan, but I just remember the pose downs. I mean, as a kid, that was cool. Now as an adult, sure. I'm like, what the fuck are they doing? Yeah. And now he's chasing Heenan around. He's completely blowed up. Trying to chase Heenan around. This was a hell of an angle. And this was really one of the feature matches, uh, for this event. And, uh, there, there's uh, King Haku going down to one, two, three. Sorry about our sound here, uh, guys. Tony does not have business internet. Tweet Tony that you want him to get the business internet at Tony Shivani. Or at T Shivani 24. I don't know. At Tony Shivani 24. Just fucking find him on Twitter. <laughs> I am so sorry. And I pay a lot for this internet as well. By well, the way. I feel like we need you know. an internet sponsor. Yeah. Uh, you know what we need? We need you to Google image. Ava Murray. That's what we need. Yeah. You know what we need? We need to fucking the internet people to come in right fucking now and fix my motherfucking internet. That I pay a lot of money for every month. I think, uh, Andre heard about your internet problem. He's coming to the ring to take care of it. Oh my God. I just realized when Andre gets in there, everybody's dead. <laughs> I don't mean like Tracy Smothers, everybody dies. I mean, Rick Rude's no longer with us. Neither is the ultimate warrior or Andre. How about that? Holy shit. You are exactly right. It's fucking depressing. That's not the. Uh, that's not Joey Morella, the referee, though. No. Well, I think that's Danny Davis. Danny Davis is right. Good call, man. I know a thing or two about a thing or two. Yeah, you sure do. I, I heard a wrestling fan the other day. He's a podcast host. But I heard the other day that he told someone, I know everything there is to know. And I was like, wow. Wait a minute. <laughs> Who is this guy? It doesn't matter. So how about, um, these angles where they would get Rick rude in the ring with the ladies. How often did you yeah. wish that you were those ladies? I mean, you had to suffer through all those sugars from Jimmy Valent. Didn't you want one from old Rick rude? No, I didn't. Not really. Cause I, you just didn't never know where that mouth has been. What does that mean? Uh, you know, <laughs> you saying that's you know how he that got means? his push. What are you saying? <laughs> it could, it could have been, I, I liked the gimmick though. I really did. And of course, you know, uh, he, uh, years later, I think I've told this story. Well, watch this scene. Years I, later, love, I love, he just fucking drops this guy. Yeah. yeah. I, I haven't seen this in forever, but the guy knows what's coming to he's holding on, but <laughs> 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 It never gets old. I, just, I don't know why that tickles me, but it does. He dropped him on his fucking head is what he did too. By the way, a uh, friend of the show, an ESPN analyst and a huge radio star, Mr. Cole Kublik, his favorite wrestler of all time, Andre, the giant, which I've never understood. It tells me that he was just a kid at the right time at the right place, because I, I don't know anybody whose favorite wrestler was Andre. Uh, me neither. I, Andre was, well, wait a minute. Uh, let's bring in the ultimate warrior. Go ahead. Warrior. 
I am here to eat all of the steroids, and I'm going to take Rick Rhodes version too. I've got all the cocaine, all the steroids, and I'm going to load them in the rocket ship, and I'm going to bring home the Intercontinental title, not because I want to be champion, not because I want to carry the belt through airports, but because I want a pay raise. I am not a wrestling fan. I am not even Nikita Koloff. I don't know why Conrad is talking like this, but I am an Indian gimmick that no one ever realized. What did he just fucking say? Let's go back to the ring. I don't think a lot of our listeners would be surprised to hear that we don't plan any of this and it's all just freestyle. Yeah. By the way, is it any wonder that the WWF was as popular as it is? Hey, check out the belt right there. This is a little belt trivia for you. The intercontinental title was too big for Rick Martel's tiny waist, So they added an extra row of snaps. So if you look, there's extra snaps outside of what belt marks would call the snap box. So you'll see where there's just way more snaps on his than any other time. And they just had to go back in and sort of retrofit the belt and add those after the fact. So it looks like just a ridiculous number, but it's because his waist is like a 30 inch waist or something dumb. Can I ask you something too? I, I hope, uh, I hope you can hear me or, or am I coming through clearly or not? Yeah. The business internet is just fine. Okay. Um, uh, the term snap box, did you just freestyle <laughs> that or is that really, <laughs> uh, yeah, snap box is what they call it. And so, you know, you've got two rows of snaps on either side, one male side, one female side. And, uh, there is a rectangle that's outlined in the leather around those groups of snaps and belt marks have referred to it as snap boxes, but I don't think like belt makers like Dave Milliken or Reggie parks. I don't think those guys ever called it that. I think fans have just decided to call it a snap box. And the first time I heard it is like on that old red NWA TV title. It's all red leather with the exception of where the snaps are. And then that area is black. So Mm -hmm. the first time I saw that is when people were saying, oh, I want the red NWA TV with the black snap boxes. And I had the same thing as you. I was like, Hey, I need to Google that. And then I realized, no, don't Google snap box. Uh, Congratulations on trying to legitimize snap box, but a snap box is a snap box. And that probably should be a shirt on LoisRules.com. A snap box is a snap box. By the way, I don't know if it's been a while since you've checked out LoisRules.com, but you need to. Uh, I think Cassia needs the American Whales shirt. What a great shirt that is. Or FMW, not Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling. Fuck me wrestling. Arn Anderson's favorite shirt. Shivani's Organic Formula Water Buffalo Shampoo. Should we give him that when he comes to StarCast? That's exactly. Well, I wish we knew what you I said. I was thinking the same time. We should, if you get business internet, we'll know what we you said send. next week. Okay. Do you want me to hit stop here? No, I think we just roll. Let's roll. Listen, we okay. get, we're God, giving you this I, shit early and often, and we're taping in the middle of the fucking day. It is nine o'clock in the morning here. And, uh, yeah. Well, that's because, you know, you're a big, you're a big star. You're heading to, <clears throat> I know, Brooklyn, probably no, this no, weekend. No. And- hang on, hang on. As soon as we get done here, I'm going straight to the mortgage office and I'm going to be there until it's almost time to go to sleep. And then I'm going to come home uh-huh. and I'm going to tape a Bischoff podcast. And then I'm going okay. to wake up tomorrow at six o'clock and I'm going straight to the mortgage office and I'm going to be there until I can't work anymore. And then I'm going to do the same yeah. thing on Friday. All this big show shit. No, dude. Yeah. I'm burning. So now you, 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 you stopped on Friday. What is Saturday like for you? I got to fly to uh, Brooklyn (laughs) and do the show (laughs) and then turn around and fly right home. So like earlier this week, I flew to Chicago that morning and I flew home in the afternoon. I can't afford any time away. I've got to be here or, or something's going sideways. Yeah. Well, how come I wasn't invited to Brooklyn? Well, what do you mean? You're, you're always welcome. You got fucking baseball. Yeah. Do you not have fucking baseball? Yeah, I do. I was, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to have to do a fucking run in. I'm just going to have to do a run in sometime. Will you please do that? Yeah. It's going to have to be a waddle in though. 
I'm fine with it. By the way, um, well, some of our Patreon members are going to hear this before we post it. I was going to tell you some of the surprises, but this Brooklyn show would be a fun one for you. Oh, my God. Why? I can't say. This is going to air before our show actually happens. I can't spoil the surprise. I'll tell you off air. Oh, snap box? Maybe, maybe a snap box <laughs> or two? Uh, I, can't, I can't acknowledge anything you just said, and I'll, everything will make okay. sense very soon. Okay. <laughs> By the way, it, it, well, I was going to say a minute ago before your business internet took over. Um, by the way, are you on AOL dial up? <laughs> no, I feel like whenever you connect to the internet, I say, like, <laughs> uh, anyway, look, here, here's what happened. Look, look at all those snaps here's in that snap box. See those snaps in that snap box. A lot of extra snaps in that box. Here's what, here's what happened. My internet went down, so I had to put in my wireless gimmick here. I wonder so if I'm, I wonder if that box is roomy enough you can fit extra snaps. <laughs> it's it's the line of the day. When I when I tell you about roomy boxes with extra snaps, what comes to your mind? Snap box. Snap box is a bullshit term. Hey, so Missy Hyatt uh had a little oh. segment here <laughs> once upon a time called Missy's Manor, but it didn't work out. Did that happen at the same time you were in the WWF? No, it, it, that was before me. Okay. Yeah. I would have remembered that. I think. I, I feel like I should mention I mean, right here. I don't know why. Uh, as of yet, Francine has not committed to come to Starcast. Oh, uh, I was hoping to get her to do a run in and be a surprise. Yeah. Well, that's okay. I, I I'm sure down the road somewhere, Francine and I will get to, uh, get face to face and meet. I'd love to meet her. Cause I know she's, uh, She's, she's really a legend. I'm still going to work is. on it. I'm not giving up hope yet. Yeah. Okay. Well, good, good. So, uh, what uh, type of, uh, letter grade did this thing get? Well, I want you to guess now. Remember who's grading it too. this entire time we've been talking about, um, Wade Keller. So he, these are his right. ratings. What do you say? Uh, I'm going to say. He gave this a D. He gave it a B plus. He wrote the ultimate oh my warrior God. defeated Rick Rude for the intercontinental title. There was no shortage of two and a half counts. Warrior excelled beyond what is expected of him. Rude continues to prove he is far from the average performer. He used to be warrior on the crowd tonight. And I think the fans were more excited to see him win than to see Hogan win. Piper was at ringside at the end of the bout and distracted rude with a moon, which I'm excited to, uh, see you do comment carry on here in a minute. If we can hear it on your less than bu- no business internet, that's actually the, the money. So you've got no business internet. Like you got no business trying to put this out on your internet. Well, some bitch, by the way, here's what I was going to say earlier. There's no, I'll try this three times now. There's no wonder that the WWF is as over as they are. Look at just the presentation where you've got you know, the airbrush tights of Rick rude, the big mouthpiece with Bobby Heenan, the robe, the shit talking, you know, the, you know, Cleveland sweat hogs or whatever. And then you've got the ultimate warrior with the great music and the crazy entrance and the bright colors and the face paint and just jacked beyond belief. Like in the eighties, it's no wonder that this got over like this is everything people want. Is it not? And we were right. The fans were. All right. Fuck, fuck Tony. Tony has no internet, no business internet. To me, this is uh, attention to detail uh, is I think the biggest difference between the WWF presentation here and the Jim Crockett presentation, you know, things like the ring skirts. They weren't doing ring skirts like this on the other channel. And they certainly weren't, certainly weren't branding the turnbuckles and lighting everything the way they are. And, and I know that you sort of minimized, uh, the ring entrance, but it's still more than you got at most Crockett shows with the exception of like a star or something. And then it would just be a couple of, uh, sparklers, uh, but it still wasn't really lit well. And I think just those little things like the crowd lighting, you can see folks at the very tippy top of the arena 
Now I'm not saying that that's actually the way I prefer it to be, but it just certainly has a much bigger feel. It feels like a, a more big time presentation. Okay, you are going to have to stop on your end. I can hear you just fine. Yeah, but my uh... catch up, Tony. We're at uh, an, an hour 13, 47, 48, 49. Got it. Got it. Rick Rude working over the small of the back here. Got that Tom Selleck porn stash. <laughs> you know, it's funny because. Um, you, you look at how jacked up Rick Root is, but then you look and you see his, uh, skinny legs. And I, I think of that Kevin Nash line, Rick Root told him it's an upper body business. Yeah. And flair used to tease guys with bat with uh, the small legs, like rude, uh, and Luger. He used to say, you got them big arms. You got that big chest, but you got the minuscule calves. I never will forget the word minuscule calves. I guess that's worth mentioning that, uh, that's the reason flair wore the, um, the knee pads over the calves because that's what he was trying to do. Cause he, cause he had minuscule calves too, right? right? Yeah. He was, he was a little concerned by the way. Um, one of the team names for our minor league baseball team coming to my area that was suggested. Oh my God. We've talked about this before, but it makes me think of Rick Root here. Puffy head bird legs. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm being serious. Like to me from now on, I would like for us to, we got ham cubes over. Let's try to get over puffy head bird legs for Rick Root. All right. I, I agree. We should, I, we're, I guess we're helping your minor league team too. Well, to I don't do know that, that they're actually going to go with that name. It's just in the running. It's not yeah. an official thing to me. Um, I mean, that, that's not the name I'm voting for. I'm just, I'm just going to say right. that we've talked about this Puppy. before. Puffy had bird legs. Yeah, we have. It does. Uh, Heenan looking up at the, uh, there's a, there's a great Bobby Heenan moment looking up at the video board, seeing that everybody's on him. So he reaches in his pocket as if he's coming out with a gimmick. Part of being a great manager. Hello, can you hear me? Test, test, Talking test. to me? You, you can hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you just fine, Mr. No Business Internet. <laughs> I am, you know, right now, listen, I'm going to be very honest with everybody right now and honest with you, my good friend. Uh, uh, whoa, another referee bump. When something goes wrong in my world, like on a baseball broadcast, or on a football broadcast, or, or especially here, I get so motherfucking pissed motherfucking off that it interrupts my concentration. Why are, you, why are you mad at me? No, I'm mad at you. I'm mad at the motherfucking internet. That's what I'm mad at. Pay a lot of money for this shit. And they've been out here a hundred. Anyway, enough of that. <sighs> Focus. Focus, take a deep breath, focus. I need some therapy. I think today before this day is over. Anyway, the good news is this there he went. He gone. No business internet strikes again. Ravishing Rick Rude, stalking the ultimate warrior. He's trying to shake it off. Ultimate warrior's got shorter hair here than I remember trying to do the Hulk up action. Hey, can you hear me? I think I'm, I'm think my regular internet's back now. Is it? I don't know. I mean, does I, I we'll see. Okay. Oh my God. Fans were into this shit, man, running it and uh, grabbing the ropes and shaking it. And and you're going to see here a big pop from the fans, buddy. Boy, Rude could take some bumps too. Couldn't he? Man, Rude is a bumping machine here doing everything he can to help get the ultimate warrior over. Yeah. He was really a businessman. I, I really. You know, Rude really loved the business and really worked hard and really thought it was his job as a heel to put people over. The referee has been out almost as long as my internet. Why doesn't he get the fuck up? Come on. Is this Danny Davis again? Slap him in the face, get him up. 
What a mm. what a what a pile driver mm. here. Excellently executed pile driver. Yeah. You know, for all the, the shit that he couldn't do, there was some shit that the warrior could do. For instance, oh, this is Joey Morella again, I believe. One, two, foot on the ropes. How about that? And he and cheering. Telling you, b- behind air, if, if you're going to give a match like this a B because of the Ultimate Warrior's limited ability to work, then you've got two things. You've got fucking great heel here, which you do. And number two, you got a guy who knows how to set up a match. And I'll bet you anything, Pat Patterson set this match up. All right. No, no question. I don't think. Yeah. Wow. Man, I agree. This match, this match is really a good match. And the one that the Ultimate Warrior had a year later at WrestleMania, or less than a year later, was a really good match, too. Man, he, he, he could follow instructions. And that there's something to be said, you know, do, I mean, there's a lot of guys who will be given a match like this. who go out and try to do a little freestyling and, uh, and not get it down. Right. But he got it down. Right. And fucking Rudy is just tremendous. It was, uh, let me just tell you the commentary here in the torch, the ultimate warrior Rick Rude match was spectacular and better than the highest expectations. Hmm. You on the other hand, not so much. Oh, really? Tony Schiavone was a little disappointing to me. I thought he was good, but below his average. Although this was his first time working with Jesse Ventura, who was good as always. A Schiavone Ventura team has potential to be the best, but it will take some experience together first. Well, that's not bad. He's right. You know, I'm, I'm still, I wasn't, I wasn't wasn't done, but as for his performance on this show, Shivani really sucked a dick. <laughs> huh. um, I, I'll let you figure out which line I added in there. Okay. Not, yeah. I, I, I understand where the freestyling came from. I, I like, uh, I, I think he's right in many ways that, uh, I thought Jesse and I had potential, but I was uh, even, even this far in and we're what an hour and 20 minutes into the show. Uh, even this, oh, here comes Rowdy, Rowdy paper, even this this far in, I'm still nervous as shit. I mean, let, let, let's, let's, let's call it as we see it. 1989. The biggest thing I had ever done was maybe something at the Greensboro Coliseum. All right. Uh, and now here I'm at the, at the Meadowlands. I'm with Jesse, the body Ventura. Who's on Saturday night's main event. I've got maybe the greatest producer ever in my ear, Bruce Pritchard. Uh, I'm doing a Hulk Hogan match. You know, I'm basically shitting bricks here. You ready for the ass spot? Here it comes. Yes, sir, baby. (laughs) One minute, Piper says. (laughs) (laughs) And of course, that's going to help with the finish here as well. Oh, my God. Imagine a grown man being that mad that somebody else, another grown man showed his ass. Yeah. And it leads you to use the, to lose the match. How would you describe the ultimate warriors, uh, rain dance here? <laughs> uh, running in place is what it is. How did now I not, you re- how did I not realize that I was like 34, 35, that the ultimate warrior was an Indian gimmick. Yeah. Well, see right now he's, he's raising up to the heavens and he's asking the spirits to come down and help him out. Look at these fucking look- guys wearing ties in like the third row across from the hard cam. Look at them. Yeah. You know, they're before their time. You know, they, they want to be, they want to stand out and they just did. No, I mean that one dude, he, he's a, uh, that's old captain gray Bush. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. That's like Jack Patrick or something. <laughs> I think we ought to do something with this wrestling. <laughs> Jack Patrick. God bless Jack Patrick. I don't know if he's still alive or not. So there's warrior with all the extra, uh, snaps in the box. Yeah, th- there it is. Fans are into it, man. One less snap that, on that. Oh, that snap got wonky. You know, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and it was a great shot of him with the WWF logo. The old, uh, and I know the, the logo that they got now is really cool, but the old WWF logo I thought was fucking awesome. It's the best I've actually yeah. got, you know, how you guys used to do promos with Mean gene in the back and it would just be that logo like on yeah. the wall. I've actually got one of those. Wow. 
I managed to finagle one. Wow. I grew up on that. I bet you did. See, there it is. It just stands out, man. It was the WWF. There's Sean Mooney. He's going to be a star cast. Yeah, I know. Sean's already done an interview in the show. And, uh, when the ultimate warrior dropped a guy on his head and now he's talking about, man, it's so exciting out here. Take a look at all of what's going on and how about how gray my hair is going to get in about 30 years. Let's go back to Tony and Jesse. Well, I'm going to have some popcorn. I feel like I should mention here that, uh, we even have a mic cube that looks pretty familiar for, mm. for our Sean Mooney cut a promo gimmicks. Look at all those extra snaps, a lot of snaps in that box. All right. Well, thank you very much. Conrad Thompson and Tony Chivani, as you can tell, I look very, very young here, but wait, do you see how I age? It is not really a great sight. I want to bring in Mr. Perfect and, uh, Kurt Henning. Uh, were you going to have the red rooster gimmick? Well, I thought you were going to do this one, Tony. My apologies. Okay. I thought I was okay. Well, I wouldn't have the red fucking rooster gimmick. I'm Mr. Perfect. We're giving that gimmick to a fucking low life like Terry Taylor. And by the way, he's a job guy. Doesn't he get it? We were on SummerSlam, SummerSlam, Gene, summer fucking slam. And he goes down in three minutes. Now he may say that it was because of an injury bullshit. It was because of the perfect plex one, two, three. And Terry Taylor, let me say this. In the history of pro wrestling, as I stand on the other side now, no one has gone down in three minutes on SummerSlam but you. With that in mind, we're going to send it back to the ring to my longtime personal friend, Tony Schiavone and Jesse the Body Venter. Wait, wait a minute. Holy shit. <laughs> if you showed Rick Rude your ass, what are you going to show me? <laughs> well, maybe I'll just show you my dick. <laughs> Show you my dick. <laughs> uh, well, uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to show you my dick. Uh, because as you know, I wear nothing underneath the kilt. Absolutely. That's the way it is. And I am a hot rod. And I just wonder, is there now 30 years later, a female with my gimmick? Yes. Uh, that's uh, absolutely right. Ronda Rousey. <laughs> Ronda Rousey's got my gimmick. Yeah. I bet she doesn't raise up her skirt and show her ass to anybody. No, I bet she doesn't do that. But before it's all over, Gene, I'm going to absolutely show people my dick. Now, I know I don't do the voice as quiet as Bruce Pritchard does, but I do want to let everybody know that I'm still one of the biggest stars in all of wrestling. Absolutely. Gene, you want to see my dick? <laughs> because I'm going to show it to you before this is all over with. Absolutely. Ultimate Warrior, the Native American gimmick, please. Rick Rude, gyrating those hips in front of me, please. I'm a real man. I'm a Scotsman. I'm a real man. I drink, I fuck, I show people my ass. <laughs> and before it's over, little bald fuck to my left, I may show you my dick as well. Woo. <laughs> All right, Rowdy, Roddy Piper, the only one. We're going to make sure that he shows us his package before this show is over. My God, I'm going to bring in another man, and let's bring him in right now. Ronnie Garvin, my God, look at you. Here you're in the WWF. And you're not going to be here for long, are you? Uh, no, Gene, uh, I really don't have that much of a personality. Well, that's okay. Uh, with me at the stick, you don't need one. Yeah, but I, uh, I flew in here on my own private plane. Oh, absolutely. Wait a second. Bobby the Brain Heenan. Fuck that Tony Schiavone. <laughs> I should be doing this broadcast, not him. He came here. I was on challenge. He moved me off a fucking challenge. His chair has to be higher than anybody else's. Do you see that short fuck? Fuck him. I'm going to write a book and I'm going to shit on that motherfucker. Uh, let's bring in Rick Rude. Rick, what do you think about Tony Schiavone? Uh, his chair being higher. Who, who's Tony? Ch oh, yeah. That's that little son of a bitch that was in the back at Jim Crockett Promotions in that fucking garage that we try to ever make everybody think was a damn studio. But it wasn't a studio. It was a garage. He holds the mic. He's been in baseball all his life, and now, well, I don't want to interrupt, but I got to take a look at Roddy, Roddy Piper showing Rick Rude his ass. And I, as he shows his ass, uh, as you can see, we're going to take that angle so we don't see the ass here on a replay. But uh, let me get it. That was the finish of the match. The man shows him your, his ass, and you lose because of it. Don't you think that was kind of a little a funky way to 
to lose the match? Well, let me say this. As we're talking about the Intercontinental title, I want the belt back. Do you know why? I want all those snap boxes. <laughs> One more thing I'd like to say to Tony Schiavone. Motherfucker, you move me off challenge. I'm going to come to WCW. I'm going to work with you, and you're going to keep angles from me. You're going to hide things from me. That's exactly right. Because you're Mr. Political. Mr. Butts and Seats. Bull fucking shit. Absolutely. Fuck you. Fuck. Yeah, we all fuck Eric Bischoff while we're at it. Who in the hell is Eric Bischoff? You'll see in about 30 years. I don't know what in the hell he's talking about, but these two guys are completely out of control. And now we're going to hopefully go back to the ring. This is a much longer interview than I wanted to happen. All right. Jesus Christ. I need a drink. I also need a kidney. Oh God. That's the reason I don't do them. I can't do them as good as you. I'm not doing them anymore. From now on, it's just you. (laughs) No. Uh, okay. Notice how much higher my chair is in Jesse's here. Well, yeah, that's the Tony Schiavone move. I mean, he is seven foot tall. You're five, four, but if you're watching at home, you think you're the giant. And you don't realize we had those old fashioned. Oh my God. Back. We are to mean Gene Oakland. What the fuck am I working? Hey, we pre tape these all during the day, but I want to let you people know that exclusively on the WWF hot. Oh, I'm not doing that yet. Okay. I wish we had a fucking hotline so I could make a little extra money, but now we're going to take you back to Saturday night's main event. This is back when wrestling was fucking real. Oh, I love this as a kid, man. Seeing him yeah. march out to the ring. He's got the beautiful belt on in the cage and there's Zeus waiting for him. Boss man on yeah. the inside of the cage. One of your highlights of your career too. What a great moment. Absolutely, man. A tiny Lister, you know, tiny Lister in real life was a cool motherfucker, buddy. Before or after he went to prison for mortgage fraud. Uh, it's probably before and probably after. He was just a cool motherfucker, you know, and you know what I liked about him? What'd you like about him? The universe? No, no, he could stand in the front yard, count the chickens in the back. I love you. And and not everybody could do that. And and I just thought that was a hell of a talent. When he cried, tears run down his back. Oh yeah. Who's this red faced motherfucker to my left? Whoa. And I'm not talking about Sherry. I'm talking about you. You no good piece of shit. And we're, oh, boy, they, they packaged the shit out of this, didn't they? When they're getting it over. Yeah, they are. They absolutely are. Here he came in like Frankenstein monster and here's my partner. And, and, and by the way, who's one of the greatest workers in the world, but Sherry Martell. <laughs> this guy legitimately as a kid, this whole Zeus yeah. thing, man, it had me. I was all Did in. It really? Oh, I was all in. Uh, speaking of all in. Uh, no, I, uh, I, this is how kiss ass everybody was. All right. We all went to see no holes barred. All right. And I remember JJ saying with a bunch of us there, you know what? Hulk Hogan is a much better actor than I had given him credit for. And I remember scratching my head and saying, well, JJ, I'm glad you said that, but take a look, brother. Take a look to my right. The one Brutus, the barber beefcake. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And he's been hearing what you're saying about him. Absolutely. He's been hearing what you used to been saying about him, Conrad Thompson. And we're going to go back to another video package, but take a look at what he did right there. Okay. Going up against the macho King, Randy Savage and with Zeus down below as well. Brutus, the barber beefcake. Oh, there's a sleeper could put on the sleeper hold as well as anybody in wrestling. He would have won this match. Conrad Thompson had it not been for Zeus. So say what you want to about this guy, say what you want to about Brutus, the fucking barber beefcake. He may be my friend, but Conrad Thompson, you would have to agree as I'm going to do a run in here that he was one hell of a performer. Am I right? 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 Okay. All right. Listen. I thought Brutus, the fucking barber beefcake was over. He was fun. He was a good character. I liked him as a kid. I only ever took issue with Brutus, Mm. the fucking barber beefcake. When he beat the Mr. Perfect streak, he shouldn't have been the guy to beat that. It should have been Hulk Hogan. Well, brother, that's because they asked me who should beat the streak. And I said, why not my buddy Brutus, the barber beefcake. 
And out of all this, out of all this, it took somebody like the macho man, Randy Savage, to be able to work with Zeus and be able to have some semblance of a match for the main event here. You know, we're, we are still basically what about an hour away from the main event and not really an hour away from the main event, maybe about, uh, 45 minutes away from the main event. And we're showing a big package here. So they knew how to put shit over, man. Meanwhile, I always wondered while this package is going on, which has been going on about five minutes here, uh, what we were doing in the arena at that time, bam, hit him with a chair and he didn't even fucking sell it. He just fucking laughed. <laughs> yes, sir, man. They, they were always looking for some sort of big monster, big monster to feed to Hogan. And they had one right there. Yeah, they did. And now here's the big standoff, buddy. We are ready for the main event for SummerSlam. And the fans are buying every bit of it. What a fucking Tiny blister. What a fucking time in wrestling, man. Yeah, it was. This is my favorite year. This and 97. I've said that several times here on the show, but 89 and 97, my two absolute favorites. Well, it was my favorite year too. 89 was. And I mentioned that in my favorite year of being in the business. I enjoyed the business more that one year than I, than I did. And, and you know, I had pressure on me. Yeah. And oh God, why did Jesse stand up? Cause now he's taller than me. Damn it. But I would have known that I was stood on my chair. You know, I, I anyway, we, we had these uh, office chairs, you know, they had the, uh, the hydraulics, you know, had the, yeah. you could, you could reach underneath and grab the, the lever and pull it up. And there was one time we were talking and I noticed he was higher than me and I reached to grab his lever and he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm grabbing the lever of the chair. I'm, I'm trying to pump it up and down so that you'll go down. He said, you don't have a hold of the lever of the chair. What were you grabbing? Uh, I don't know. I, but I, I held on to it for a whole match. It may have been this one right here. I'm not sure. Here it comes. Here I come. <laughs> By the way, Eric Rottencrotch, friend of the show, has the best big boss man cosplay ever. And I've actually done Akeem for Halloween before. Have you really? Yeah, I've got that outfit in my closet somewhere. Okay. okay. What year did you do that? I'm going to say um, 2013. Wow. I say, I say we need to see Conrad, the Alabama dream, make an appearance on a live show. Well, it's too bad. Uh, that's it's too bad. You're not coming to Brooklyn. <laughs> George gray, buddy. Good guy. Look at uh, this. Silly shit. Look at this silly shit. Oh God. First of all, let me tell you, I think the, uh, the hacksaw Jim Duggan Haku crown is underrated. I was always a fan yep. of that crown because it was a little more rugged, but I love that he put a crown on the end of his two by four. That's fine. But wearing the mask and the fucking face paint that we haven't seen yet. Quite the presentation. This is the most effort Duggan put into anything in the WWF. You know what? I, I like the King gimmick too, because I forever in a day when I, uh, when I, uh, thought of Haku, I think of King Haku. I thought that just kind of rolled off the tongue and the macho King, Randy Savage. That was pretty good shit, man. I can't wait to see this face paint. I don't remember it, but it's going to be a great reveal here. Apparently. I can't believe you don't remember the face paint. I don't. Here we go. Are you ready? <laughs> take it off. Come on, take it off. <laughs> What do you think? Can I get you at one, at one of our live shows? Cause we do have live shows coming up. I yeah. need you to like paint your face like that and, and paint my tongue too. Cause he obviously had a red tongue. Uh, you know what? Tom Zink would have painted your face for you. And he may have back in the day. Right, go to tomzink.com and you never know comedy zone, mm -hmm. Charlotte. When we get there on November 11th at 3 PM. Tony Schiavone might have a fresh coat of paint on his face. Go check it out. Tomzink.com. I'm excited about this, man. We're in Crockett country 
and you don't have fucking baseball that day. In fact, we've managed to schedule this when you don't have to worry about missing a Titans game, uh, not a Titans game, but a Panthers game rather, because that is a Sunday three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, but the, you don't have to worry. No Panthers game that day. How about that? Yeah. That is so fucking cool. Uh, hang on a sec. I, I, I'm just trying to process all that you just said. All uh, right. Yeah. Tom Zink may have painted my face in the past. What, what does that mean? What, what, which part was confusing? That part. Well, Tom y- Zink. y'all were buddies. Yeah, we were sometimes when guys have affection for one another, they'll show it in different ways. You, uh, uh, it, there are lots uh, of, lots of gimmicks in wrestling. I mean, you see Duggan's got the paint on and well, we yeah, well, hang on a second. You and I are buddies, Yeah, but you've never painted my face, but we've never been like performing. I mean, the half of the ring right now, half of the folks in this match have had their face painted. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, maybe so, but they are just working over George gray right now. Had a chance to, uh, hang out with him at, uh, WrestleCon, uh, two years ago in, uh, or I guess over a year ago now in Orlando, uh, really a good guy, but he was a guy that yeah, uh, George Gray was a guy that, and look, his first gimmick was a good one until he talked. He didn't need to talk. One man gang. One man gang. He just should have stood there. Because once he talked, he sounded like, well, he sounded like someone from Louisiana is what he did. Well, what's wrong with that? It doesn't work with one man gang. Oh, uh, what, what type of accent should he have had? Your, well, you know, you know, yeah, one of those growling accents, one of those, 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 those big ballsy accents or speech patterns. I don't know. I'm freestyling here. I have no idea. This is our last time taping in the middle of the day, Tony. Why is that? Because I'm dropping out again? No, just because I've got 9 million missed phone calls so far this morning. <laughs> hey, sucks being you, buddy. How many of those about StarCast? How many of those about mortgages, you think? 100% of them are about mortgages so far. Okay, well, good. That's good. That means business is good. And I'm really glad to hear that. There's that iconic WWF logo, man. It just sticks out everywhere you go, you know, and that, now they, they're to the point to where, when they're, when they're leading to heading to WrestleMania, if you know, uh, and they always performance, always pointing up to the banner of WrestleMania, making sure that, you know, cause that's right. Because Conrad Thompson, I'm heading to WrestleMania. And they point, and of course, Michael Cole or, or Tom goes crazy. WrestleMania. Uh, I think that's kind of silly, but I guess it's effective. It's marketing, right? How you think it's less silly than Tony Schiavone this Saturday night in the Omni? No. Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I just think of that. I don't know. I just pointing to the banner. There's a lot of things they do in the WWE right now that I really like. A lot of things they don't like pointing to the fucking banner. I just, I don't know. Maybe I'm being too picky. I don't know. And maybe the, the, the fact that I've been working with you for so long and, and the fact that I'm part of Starcast and I'm in your presence, one of the great wrestling oh promoters uh, of the era right now. That I'm just a little bit, I'm, I'm just looking at things with a little bit more keen eye now. You've done that to me. Let me okay? ask you this. Um, okay. I, t- 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 I just, I look, I just used to look at things and say, yeah, that's okay. Or, yeah, that's all right. But now, because I've been associated with you for going on two years now, I look at things with a keen eye. And you know what I think? What would Conrad do? Oh, my God. No, you when don't. I look at this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Why? WWCD. I'm, okay, that's, that's not, what I. That's what. That's what. That's what, I, what would. When I look at a banner, I say, "What would Conrad do?" When I look at a finish of a match. What would Conrad think of this? And uh, that, that's part of my life now. It's part of my lexicon. It's it's a part of me. What would Conrad do? Even even Conrad, when we have when we have a pitching change in baseball, 
and the, and the, and the pitching coach walks out, you know, what goes through my mind? Just what would Conrad do? You know, um, the answer about 50% of the time is order a roast beef sandwich. <laughs> well, there you go. As a matter of fact, the next game I do, our pitching coach comes out. I'm going to say he's ordering a roast beef sandwich. We'll be right back. So, you know, yeah, it is. I mean, look, it is a, it's a big part of what's going on in wrestling right now. Okay. And I, I think, I think there should be, oh, I gotta do all this for the straight face. I think there should be a banner at Starcast WWCD. What are you saying? Why are you doing this? I just do. I, good God. You, you are, you know, you like saying, oh God. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just a redneck wrestling fan from Alabama mortgage guy. I'm just behind the scenes. You're doing 5 million fucking podcasts and then you tune on somebody else's podcast. Oh, guess who the special guest is Conrad Thompson. Oh, by the way, how many tweets did Conrad send out a day? Five fucking million. Oh, there you go. And he's on Facebook. My God, he may be on Twitch before you know it. And let's do Patreon. And my God, God, how do you have, when are you going to fucking slow down demolition with the big win here? And don't forget to check out Starcast on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Starcast. Thank you very much. Mouth of Alabama, Jimmy Hart. By the way, uh, when, if you could ever get Lois to do WWCD, yeah, it would be clean up the fucking dog hair. <laughs> By the way, I have it. Uh, I, I, I need your confirmation here. I heard rumor and innuendo this past week and it related to you. And I thought, huh? Oh how, my God. Don't start this. Tony might know what you say it. rumor and innuendo related to me. That's never a good thing. I heard through the grapevine may or may not yeah. be true. I don't know that. Lois's nickname was big Montana. I don't even know what that even means. Um, I don't think so, but okay. I think it kind of fits. You know, you know what? Montana, Montana was just big and oh. wide open, <laughs> but it was, but it was, but it, it's also kind of flat and there ain't nothing flat about Lois. I've made a huge mistake here. I just threw it. My Google machine, urban dictionary popped up. No, yeah. there's two, two explanations. Number one is a roast beef sandwich at Arby's. And I'm not going to read you number two, but let me just say, uh, I take it back. I didn't realize that that was, um, that was a term. All right. Uh, I got to give you uh, a million dollar man, Ted DiBiase, a lot of credit. <laughs> you got this piece of shit over to your left and you're still over. <laughs> Take a look at this million dollar belt. I, it, it's probably something that Conrad Thompson, by the way, WWCD, Conrad Thompson would want to do. Take a look at those phony $100 bills. And this is the best thing that he can do is just stand there, hold the money, and look mean. Because let me tell you, anytime that the man to my left, Virgil, gets involved in any match, it is a one star match. Or maybe like Wade Keller would say, it would get a D minus. The fact is, and I am the million dollar man, and I do have this belt. Conrad Thompson probably will end up getting the belt one day. And that leads me to think again, like you're thinking, Gene, and I'm sure like Virgil's thinking here, what would Conrad do? <laughs> That's right. WWCD. Let's go back to the wrestling hotline. We are not selling a WWCD shirt, but we do have, I broke Conrad's leg. American whales, Shivani's water, Buffalo shampoo, FMW, Tommy young, low key, big hog suckers. Got the no slap dick nation. Damn. I'm good. Hashtag NFL TG bills, glass bottom boat ride tours, flare hit it first, easy way, hard way, cat bath, full arm dragon twist, hot tag express WHF and W and so many more. Go check it out right now. It's lowestrules.com. Uh, maybe my favorite low key shirt lately. Huh? Sassafras. Lowestrules.com. Whenever you pick up a shirt, eventually Tony is going to give you a call. And let me recommend strongly that if you're coming to Starcast, you don't wear a I'm a ham cubes guy t shirt. Mm. Don't do that. Oh, why? It's rude. Okay. All right. So Hercules is out next. I guess I should tell you that the torch. Uh, gave the hacksaw Jim Duggan demolition tag team match against Andre and the twin towers. 
a D minus. He, D minus. He, here's what he wrote. Hacksaw right. Jim Duggan and Demolition beat Andre the Giant and the Twin Towers in the greatest match in WWF history. Just kidding. Smash pin to came to end the match. Andre was Andre. It lasted seven minutes and it was eight too long. D minus. Wow. Well, good thing we ignored it. And now rugged Ronnie Garvin is going to, is the ring announcer for this one. <laughs> he tinks. Uh, yeah, it was written in the observer or the torch here. Ron Garvin is trying to hold as many different jobs in pro wrestling as possible. Ring announcer, wrestler, referee, and Jim Duggan is trying to wrap himself in as many gimmicks as humanly possible. He's said to be a walking souvenir stand with the, demoli- with the addition of a demolition mast. Actually, he has a bigger selection of merchandise on his person than the NWA has collectively. Wow. I think Jim, Jimmy Hart, uh, here, Greg Ballin, Greg DeHammer Valentine, I think, and unlike, unlike me, most people in wrestling are still working. Cause I save my money. I think, and I live in the mountains of West Virginia. I think. You fuck with me, Greg Valentine. I will take my single engine plane and stick it up your ass. I think here's Hercules Hernandez who also, uh, for you mid Atlantic guys was Mr. Uh, was the assassin number two. Hey, help me understand here. Ron Garvin still has a plane. Oh yeah. That's cool, man. Good for him. You know, I've, I've always been nervous about the idea of, uh, getting in a plane that was piloted by a wrestler. Yeah, I, I flew with Ronnie Garvin one time. I flew with Jimmy Garvin twice. Uh, and one of those little prop planes with Ronnie Garvin. And I know I've told this story. I, I'll tell it again. We're coming back from a Saturday taping. And I'm looking down. And I'm, I'm seeing cars on the interstate, right? And Because we're not up that high. And uh, Ronnie says, see them cars down there? I went, yeah. He said, them cars are probably going faster than you and I are right now. I said, that's great to know, (laughs) uh, but he was a good pilot. He really was. And yes, he still has an airplane and he still flies his airplane to all his, uh, all his places. What do you mean? His places? What does that mean? Speaking? Well, when okay. When he does autograph signing things, who's fucking booking Ronnie Garvin for autograph signings, uh, last year, uh, in the, uh, war, uh, not, what's it called? Legends of the Ring, uh, up in uh, up in New Jersey. Uh, when I was there, and I was I signed right next to Ronnie Garvin. Me and Ronnie Garvin, right there together. We were part of the VIP crew. Wow. You know that's weird to me that he's getting booked. You know, I mean, why couldn't they bring in somebody like Oscar for Men on a Mission? I mean, that's what we did. Starcast. We got Oscar. Robbie. Yeah, but you know, you we know, got, we got the big stuff. Why not? Like, here's, here's the thought. And you know, this from being Bill, a great wrestling promoter, Bill you bring in, you bring in guys that you bring in guys that are not necessarily haven't been around that much. It's a, it's, it's different. You don't see Ronnie Garvin that much. Bring him in. You go, Oh, Hey, Ronnie Garvin. Why not? I'll go out and see him. Hey, did I tell you that Glacier's come in the Starcast? No, are you serious? Yeah. Full gimmick. Really? Full gimmick. Huh. God bless him. You know who else is? Uh boy, I don't know. You're just hitting me with surprise after surprise. Haku. Oh no. Are you are you serious? He's gonna bite your fucking face off. He told me specifically. Fuck. Fuck man. You told Shavani, I bite your fucking face off. I was like, okay. I'll yeah, you know. no, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to have Haku follow me everywhere. Uh, Dr. D, David Schultz. He's the only guy who wanted to know what our gun policy was. (laughs) So fucking look out. (laughs) Bring them if you got them. That's our gun policy. (laughs) (laughs) By the way, uh, PCO is coming. Have you heard about PCO's resurgence? Yes, I I saw him. He was at, uh, he was at, uh, our uh, MLW show. Yeah. Pierre Carr will let his, uh, he hung himself this past week. Oh, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he did. You know, that's a, uh, that's kind of a thing to hang yourself and then, you know, 
Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't know it was a thing. Yeah, you do know what I'm talking I'm about. I'm trying to get him to set himself on fire in the basement. I think yeah, he got why, us old. Why not? Yeah. Why not set himself on fire? That'd be great. <laughs> he Seriously, <laughs> on Thursday night, you'll be there. Yeah. Uh, he's yeah. doing a live exhibition in the collector's corner from CTV2 in the basement. Yeah. And uh, I, yeah, he's going to set himself on fire or something equally silly. I, I think he ought to set himself on fire, and then I'll bring a baseball bat, and he can wrap it in razor wire and stick it up his ass. Well, don't and, miss this, folks. Cash okay. in person gets you into the vendor room. Only 20 bucks is what you need to see. PCO set himself on fire, mm-hmm. and uh, Tony Schiavone, Jack Herring room in the duty hole with a razor wire baseball bat. Yeah, it's going to be uh, PCO on a stick, flaming. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing. I don't know what we're doing. Well, I don't know what we're doing either. Hey, by the way, there's going to be lots of um, folks on Podcast Row. Buffalo Wild Wings is the sponsor. I don't know exactly what day you're coming in, but I'm going to go down there and tear it up on Wednesday if you're into some BW3s. Uh, Run that one by me again, BW3s. Buffalo Wild Wings. It's a wing establishment for gentlemen. Yes, I love the the Asian zing. I love the... uh, uh, the Caribbean jerk. Um, the Asian zing was the Che and the Caribbean jerk was the Carlos Cologne. Hmm. By the way, have I told you about the menu at Starcast? <laughs> we got a menu now. Yeah, dude. We got a restaurant in there. You didn't know. Yeah. Wow. I'm being serious. Wow. <laughs> You're going to try to be serious while this shit's going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh this is the breath. best this is my favorite part this is the best gene take a look at what we got here i have burned about three pounds of pot we're all taking a big sniff right now we're all getting really high and gene before this is over i may let you feel one of my boobs or Maybe I'll just hear and take another big sniff myself and then go all fucking crazy during the match. Because as you know, I'm fucking crazy. And I'm looking, I'm seeing, wait a minute. Taking enough of the sniff now. I see a spirit rising above the smoke here, Gene. It is, oh, it's it's a big guy from Alabama. Uh, He seems to be a mortgage guy. Oh, yeah. And I was wondering when I was asleep last night, I kept seeing in my dreams. WWCD. What would Conrad do? Oh, yeah. And the more I sniff this pot that's been burning, uh, look over here to my left. That's right. <laughs> it is pot, Tiny Lister. <laughs> it is not the body of Hulk Hogan. Just don't say a word. Just sniff and count the chickens in the back. That's exactly right. Tonight ends Hulkamania. And how many times during the 80s has someone said, Tonight's going to be in the Hulkamania, and it never was. Take a sniff, Gene. Mmm, take a sniff of that. That's some good shit. That's some good weed. That may be shit that was, oh, that may be shit that's been made. You, uh, absolutely. Uh, and I wonder, uh, Sherry, if you go in there, if you look, uh, and maybe find me a kidney. You know, you said made, which implied that it was like meth made in a toilet in Alabama. Right. You know what? I think now that I'm not being funny, I don't mean for this to be that way. I think Sherry Martell died in Alabama. Well, she was from Alabama, right? I don't know. I just know she died of a drug overdose here in Alabama. Yeah, she she was from Alabama. So listen to her talk. Listen to her talk. Oh my God! Could you be more discriminatory against Alabamians? Yeah. Well, my God. Okay. You listen to her talk. You know what you're going to say when you hear Sherry talk? You're going to say. Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi. Not sure. But not Georgia. No, of course not. What, what does Georgia we're, sound like? We're up. We're upscale. We're upscale. N- not, not that corner that touches Jacksonville. You ain't. <laughs> you mean the Okie Finoki swamp? I'm saying down there. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> where? What down ha- where? What, down right there. down there. <laughs> what has six legs, 14 teeth? I don't know what third shift at the waffle house in South Georgia. (laughs) Shit. Talk Alabama to me, by the way, here Uh, comes uh, lost in the sauce. Jimmy Snuka, who looks like a million bucks, but it's clearly nobody home here. No, he's out of his mind. 
but that's okay. Motherfucker was, I, I heard Vince say this one time in a meeting. He said, and this was, this was back in 89, uh, cause Snooker was back and he said quite possibly one of the great performers of all time. And I, I would agree. I mean, Jimmy Snooker, when he was fucking on, when he was at his height was phenomenal. Hey, he was fucking over with me, buddy. Serious business. When did you hear about him killing that girl? Uh, I can't remember, but I mean, did you know right here that he had killed the chick or was it years later? One fifty nine Oh eight catch up here. Tony's no business internet. Uh, we what won't, we won't ever have fuck. this happen again. It's taken us six hours to get through this horse shit show. We are at one fifty nine eighteen right now. So catch up and, um, the business internet died just like Jimmy Snuka's girlfriend. When did you know? <laughs> Did it happen during night? Has it happened by then? Yeah. Or are you asking me in present day? When did I know? Yeah. When did you know about situation? I, I, I didn't know about the situation until I got out of wrestling. See, it happened in uh, years before this, it was like may of 83. Okay. And he wasn't actually arrested until September, 2015 and, um, was going to trial in 2016. And then of course passed away. But it was one of those deals where I think everybody sort of turned a blind eye. I mean, obviously 83 is a different time. There was no TMZ or social media, anything like that. Yeah, but okay. I, I look, I'm not defending him, but isn't there some sort of thing that if it happened a long, long time ago, you can't be prosecuted for it. I don't think that applies to murdering people. Okay. I, I didn't know. I, I, don't, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think like that. if you jaywalk, like, you know, seven years go by and you're good to go. But like, right, I think right. if you, I think if you kill a chick like well, that, I think that's forever. Yeah. And I guess the same thing can be applied to what has happened to Bill Cosby. Right. I mean, that happened a long, long time ago and now he's getting prosecuted for it. Anyway, so much for the legal stuff. Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Snooker was a tremendous performer. Uh, what was his cause of death? Do you know? Uh, I'll look it up. Okay. I mean, I know he had, um, I know he was in poor health and they said that, uh, you know, he had dementia and other stuff, but I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I do know that, I mean, he lived to be, I mean, he lived a long life. He's like 73, I think when he died. Really? Now yeah. that is a long life for oh, you. Had, you think had, about it. He had stomach cancer. Uh, he had uh, surgery to remove his lymph nodes, part of his stomach. And, um, they thought he would recover, but of course uh, that didn't actually work out. So hmm. it wound up being in hospice care. And passed away um, January 15th, 2017. He's 73 years old. All right. So he was in hospice and they still were going to take him to court? I think it was suspended a little bit because they told him that he had six months to live. Right. It's all about the lawyers, guys. It's all about the lawyers. It, I was told that Jimmy Snuka never learned to read. Did you hear that before? I've heard that before. Yes. I've heard that, um, despite all of his financial success and fame, he never actually learned to read. So whenever they would go to like a restaurant, uh, when the menus would come down, he would pretend to look at the menu, but then he would ask the guy he was eating with, uh, what are you having mm. brother? And they would say, and he would say, that right. sounds good. I'll have that. Cause he was embarrassed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which if, if you think about it, it is a shame. Someone should have helped him out. Well, um, I mean, it's probably know. a point of pride. You know, you've got this, I mean, at his height, at his, at the height of his popularity, Jimmy Snuka, like a fucking comic book superhero physically. Yeah. And of course, you know, when you're a big star like that and you're making a lot of money and you've got a lot of fame and you have the, the physical look that he did, I'm sure he had all the attention he could shake a stick at from, from the ladies. So it's probably weird when you're the top guy and you're making all this money and you've got all this attention to be sort of humbling yourself and saying, I can't read. I understand. You know, it, it, let's, uh, let's pretend that Jimmy Snuka is current day. Okay. Now the Jimmy Snuka we're seeing right now is in the WWE in 2018. 
with what we know about him not being able to read. Don't they're going to in 2018 the WWE is going to take advantage of that. Well, I don't know that everybody knew he couldn't read, right? Well, well, I'm sure. Yeah, they had to. I mean, it it it, it would have to. This would look amongst the boys and everything. Stuff that's there are no secrets back then. It had to go back to Vince. Well, let me ask you this: now, D- DDP couldn't read when you knew him, and he learned to read well, I, very I, late in life, and then wrote a book about it. Did you know DDP couldn't read? Only when, only after I heard the, about the book, I didn't know that at the time. So no. there you go. That's what I'm saying. There would have been no, I mean, he kayfabed everybody that th- this is a sensitive thing where they don't want everybody to know. I understand like it's a shortcoming. It's a character flaw. It's something you're embarrassed about and you wish was different, but they're not going to talk about it. Like, I mean, you didn't run around back in WCW and be like, guys, I got, a, I got a little, I got like a baby penis, you know, it's micro phallus. It's a button on a fur coat. You weren't telling people that. I was like, your secret. You yeah. Tell everybody backstage that you had a baby penis. So why would he be telling everybody he can't read? Well, I, I, I just think that they, they would exploit it. Now they would have vignettes say, uh, Jimmy Snooker cannot read. However, we have gone to the great lengths here in the WWE to make sure he can read now. And over the next three months, we're going to be showing you how Jimmy Snooker can read. Just, they would, they would, that's the, the world we live in now, Conrad. Right. Yeah. Don't you agree with that stuff? I, I mean, like for instance, there's a lot of, there's a lot of vignettes out there now about, about animals and about dogs being mistreated and about the, uh, ASPCA, you know, taking care of dogs and, and making sure that the dogs have a place to live. And that's, you know what? That's nice. I get it. And I'm a big dog guy, but they're just putting themselves over. We are. Jimmy Snuka going up top, going to do the super fly splash here. Obviously the signature move. I had a poster of this as a kid. I think I still have this one somewhere. Uh, and here it comes. That's what you really paid for all those flash bulbs going off. It was a big move. It's interesting. You know, how much time has changed in 19 years that that was like the high spot back then. That was the high spot. That's a high spot here. And the torch though, maybe not so much. Wow. Uh, it gets a D minus, no, sorry, D plus. Although Snuka is three careers past his prime with DiBiase, this match could have been very satisfying. It wasn't. Snuka was counted out, chasing Virgil around the ring, and uh, that wraps that one up. Big splash. We are at two hundred six, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine. So catch up. Oh, look at that big hair in the crowd right there. I guess that was probably roll tide back in 89. Hey, there's Sean Mooney at the tippy top of the arena. What a huge shot of a giant crowd here showing you where the business is. We're at 206, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. Hopefully you're caught up with us. And uh, next week we hope to actually get Tony in a real state like Alabama that has internet. We do have accents, but we do have internet. So we've got that going for us. Speaking of somebody who's got the internet brother. I think we're going to go to a Brutus, the fucking barber beefcake promo with the immortal Hulk Hogan and mean jeans going to be the stick man, Tony. I'm looking forward to seeing what you've got in store for us here. How about Hogan and Burtus rule B U R T U S <laughs> Jesus Christ. It looks like one of the Shivani boys. Take it away. Tony. Yeah. No, it looked like it's about to take a look at these big guns. Would you there? Uh, Gunred Thompson. And yeah, I'm on the big hog. The one and only immortal Hulk Hogan against Zeus. The way, you know something, brother, I've heard enough of this shit. I've heard enough problems about the internet. This is SummerSlam 89. This brother is one of my crowning moments. I'm going to take down Zeus and I've got to be laughed at and ridiculed because of some little fat ass slapdick can't get his internet right. Well, let me tell you, it's the last time we're doing this, Giovanni, from your house. The next time we do it. You're either going to go to the radio station or you're going to go to the ballpark where there is good internet. I'm not putting up with it. Why? Because I'm the immortal Hulk Hogan. Eric Bischoff's not coming to my life yet, but I can tell you this. I'm going to become the immortal Hulk Hogan, whether it's here or whether it's in WCW or maybe it's in TNA or maybe who knows, maybe I'm even going to be kicked out of the hall of fame and put back in. Doesn't matter to me, brother, but let me tell you something, Brutus, the barber beefcake, you I've had enough of Conrad Thompson. Take it away, Brutus. 
Well, you know something, Hulkster? I'm really concerned about that fat ass in Alabama. Conrad Thompson, these shears are for you. I'm going to do strutting. I'm going to do cutting. And most of all, I'm going to fuck up your hair because I'm Brutus the fucking barber. <laughs> oh, there you go. Speaking of fucked up hair, take a look at me, brother. And take a look at you, Mean Gene. We two are bald fucks and we're still over and we're still millionaires. Tonight, the main event is SummerSlam. Down goes Zeus. Down goes the macho man, Randy Savage. And then we are going to take Sister Sherry, Sensational Sherry, Queen Sherry, whatever she's known now. I know she's from Alabama. I can tell by the way she talks. Well, that would be Alabama maybe or, or maybe Mississippi. I'm not sure. Or it could be Louisiana. One of those states down there. One of the deep south states. They all sound the same to me. She sounds like a female Conrad Thompson. And only I think I got to do is look you in the eye, Brutus Beefcake, and say this. What would Conrad do when Hulkamania runs wild on you? Ooh. All right. Call the hotline. Get me a kidney. Let's go to the ring. Don't know if it sounded like that, but it probably should have. I like How it. About we'll, we'll go with think. it. How about the fink? Oh, mm. and now from the genius, they say I'm the man that could perform fellatio on myself, but I say it's a terrible rumor. I am Randy Savage's brother. Absolutely. Leaping Lanny Poffo. I leaped one time over the rope to grab my own rope and shove it in my mouth. They looked at me and said, are you a genius? And I said, no, that is just absolutely a trait that I've always had. So I'm going to rhyme and reason with you today at SummerSlam, wondering why that redneck Tony Schiavone is calling my match. I love the genius. Didn't you? No. You didn't? No. You didn't like his rhymes and the things that he did? He was good at it. I'm not saying he wasn't good at it. I don't have to like it. <laughs> I would have liked to have seen him go to ECW and get total elimination put through a table <laughs> by Sabu. Right. And now another legend of the ring, the one and only Howard Finkel as well. I got to give Howard a call, see how he's doing. He's doing good. The rumors of his demise have been greatly exaggerated. Oh, well, that's good. And out comes is- the macho man in one of his coolest robes. I was a huge fan of this version and, uh, there is a private collector who owns it. And I hate that person. <laughs> Not because they're you- a bad person, but because I don't have it. Why don't you buy it from him? I don't think it's for sale. Everything's for sale. Conrad. Uh, how much would you sell uh, Lois for? I don't know if I can give her away. Well, I got a buyer. I'll get you a unsigned birthday card and a can of Hormel chili. Ah, damn. I'll take it, buddy. Hormel chili and a little bit of Velveeta cheese. No, you know, you, no you deal put them on together. The that's a hell of a dip. No deal on the Velveeta. You got to do that on your own. Mm, God, Vel- God almighty. You know, I've been on DDP yoga for so long that I forgot. I forgot how Hormel chili and Velveeta cheese taste when you dip. Vienna sausages in them. Oh God. Are you serious? You put Vienna oh. sausages in there. Oh no. You, you just dip, you put them on a toothpick and dip them in like, you know, like hors d'oeuvres. You're fucking disgusting. Oh my God. That's so good. Ugh. Oh. I can't believe we're even friends. I'm going to pretend like I didn't hear that. Let, let me get it. Come on. Come on. Bullshit. You're from Alabama. Come on. You tell me you've never eaten potted meat. Have no. We had this conversa- no. Have we had this conversation before? I was a kid and I got snookered into trying a Vienna sausage one time. That was enough for me. It was awful. God. You ever eaten, you ever eaten pork and beans from the can? No. Oh, do you like sardines on crackers? No. What? Wait a minute. You, you can't sit over here in Georgia and make fun of my accents. And you're eating all this hobo food. Everything you look, there I am as a kid. It's not, it's a, there you are. You're not kidding. Uh, uh, ten, 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 ten. When it comes rushing down and it hurts so bad. Dun, dun, dun. What the fuck oh, are you saying? That's his, that's his bag, man. Sorry. 
I am a real American. I'm going to cut off the hair of the bald man. A lot of, uh, as Dave Meltzer would probably say, a lot of heat for this one. The fans are really into it. Look at all the Hulk Hogan. Foam fingers. Uh, They're everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. That foam hey. finger was hot in 89, boy. Yeah. I think I have one. I had one for sure. Yeah. You know, what's fun is, is um, you know, those things became really, really popular and you guys even made like a four horseman one way back in right. the day for Crockett with four fingers, which I thought was fun. You know what else they, they tried to sell too was a foam macho man, Randy Savage hat. Did you ever see one of those? I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. That I know I have up in the attic. No, you, I'm so fucking tired of you talking about this attic. You, you said there was going to be a rap battle Royal. And you were going to clean this thing out and we were going to get to see all, all the mysteries that were up there. I've even got one guy saying that flares robe that I want so bad with the white feathers and the silver butterflies that it's in your attic next to my fucking bell. And now next to the macho man hat that we'll never see. Oh God. Boy, you, you know, this, uh, this internet problems we've had today has really pissed you off. Hasn't it? Dude, I I'm, mean, so, like, I'm so irritated you, with you right now. You, you're just snapping at me right now. My Adobe audition. I'm on untitled number eight right now. <laughs> it's all your fault. Well, that's okay. Cause I've got to put it together. It'll be fine. Once you, once you send it to me, it'll be fine. You won't have to worry about it again. No, no, right? I can patch it together. It's not that okay. it's, this is a two and a half hour show and it, it's yeah. taken us, I don't know, seven and three quarters of an hour. Well, you know, I, I live in, I live in one of the biggest metropolises in the country, Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, but you eat potted meat and sardines and have no internet. So fuck it's a you. look potted meat and sardines. And I want, I want to hear from everybody on this on Patreon. No, listen or okay. They're with me. They're it's, not, with it's you. a Southern food. It's, it's Southern cuisine. No, it's not. It's, hobo it's not hobo food. cuisine. It's hobo food. It's not hobo food is what you get out of the, the trash can. No, it's, that's, that's what this is. That's where sardines belong. You motherfucker. <laughs> you just, you know, you, it's, <clears throat> here's something you've heard before. Once you get past the smell, you can eat it. I don't, well, for all the credits, I don't know. What to <laughs> <say right now. laughs> and there's another shirt for Lois <laughs> I just, I just, what are we doing with our lives? <laughs> I don't know. I was, uh, I never was like this till I started talking to you. I, ne I never, I was a God fearing church going guy. Wait a minute. Howard Finkel needs to talk. Oh, yeah, Hogan said that there's nothing in the bag that uh, Brutus, the barber beefcake brought into the ring, except shears. That's exactly right. Brother, nothing in the bag. I repeat nothing in the bag. All right, let's get this match started. A lot of posturing here, Conrad, wouldn't you say? I guess. I guess. Is that all you got? Well, I mean, here's oh. the deal. I don't know how we can beat once you get past the smell, you can eat it. Like, we, we're talking too long now. The no, we're talking sardines now. Oh, there she is. The ghost wow. of Miss Elizabeth. Man, how sad is this? Yeah. She's gone. Macho's gone. Sherry's gone. And unfortunately, mm. Brutus and Zeus are still with us. Oh my God. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you back in the, back in the day, she was absolutely smack dab gorgeous. I really think that, that Vince had a crush on her and then who didn't. Right. Right. By the way, she's from Kentucky, which is pretty redneck in itself, but not anywhere near Alabama. All right. Ready to get this match underway now. Yep. What do you remember about this match? Do you remember what happened at the end? I remember the finish for I, sure. I remember the uh, snip of the ponytail. I remember right. the atomic drop. Right. I guess we should mention that, uh, DiBiase was a D plus Hercules and Valentine was a D minus by the way, the line about Hercules was Hercules continues to show he's the most expendable personality in the WWF. There's just no future or present value to him and Titan. He's right. Hacks on demolition. Got a D minus mm -hmm. uh, warrior so far leads the pack with a B plus. 
him and uh, Rick Rude. Yep. The Rockers, uh, they, their match got a B. Mr. Perfect got a D. And we got a D for Dusty and Honky, but the opening match got a B. So right. three good matches so far. The Rockers, the Heart Foundation, and believe it or not, the Ultimate Fucking Warrior. Do you want to guess what the rating that uh, they gave this one was? Oh, uh, they're, they're going to say this match was an F. Nope. C plus. Whoa. In a lot of ways, it was reminiscent of last year's main event and match quality and heat. The fans were very into this match and Zeus was over. Zeus was bashed in the head with Sherry's loaded purse by Hogan body slam leg dropped leading to his shoulders, staying on the mat for three Elizabeth and Sherry were both at ringside. Mm. You know what I remember most about this match? What's that? I, I remember most about this match. Uh, Bruce Pritchard in my ear telling me to really make a big deal. If you go back and listen to this, really make a big deal of Zeus going off his feet. Right. It's like he couldn't go down and, you know, they hit him with the purse and Hulk finally gets him and my God, he's going to go, he's going to go down, really make a big deal out of that. That's why I thought, uh, that's why I thought Bruce was a good, good producer. Uh, and, uh, and I'm not just sucking up to him. He really was. And, uh, so he helped me along in this a, a great deal. And that, that was the big thing because they had presented Zeus, tiny listers, this big monster. And, uh, he was in the uh, Batman movie with the Joker, by the way. And, uh, I know you don't know that they present him as this big monster who he couldn't get off his feet, you know, Savage and Hogan. And we're doing some bumping. Br- Brutus was doing the bumping. He could bump, uh, do what he could do, but getting Zeus off his feet was the big deal in this whole thing because he was the monster that didn't go down. You know, so it was a big deal. You know, what we're doing what we're watching Friday and we're watching it on Patreon and we're going to do it before the end of the month. Watching what on Patreon Friday. Watching Friday. Yeah. We've talked about, oh, that's right. It's a movie, movie, right? The most famous Zeus movie ever. And when you were talking, when you were standing over the cauldron earlier with the smoke coming out and talking about how it was weed and you didn't make a, it's Friday. You ain't got no job. You ain't got shit to do. (laughs) Uh, I was like, he's got to see this movie. We've got to make this happen. So. There you go. Tune in to Patreon to watch Tony Schiavone watch Friday for the very first time. <laughs> oh, we should have Ron Funches join us. Oh God. But maybe that's the move. Maybe we wait and do it with Ron. Cause he is captain weed. Oh, he is. Oh, big time. And I feel like you watching Friday with Ron Funches has just home run all over mm. it. Can I ask you something as it relates to Starcast? Sure. Uh, there's going to be, I, I, I am so excited to be there, but I'm so excited to be there because I know there's a lot of surprises that you've not let me in on. So who knows what's going to fucking happen that whole week, uh, to me, uh, do you think I should have a little drink or two before we start? Yes. Okay. It's a great call. Cause you know, I don't drink. Right. But I mean, why uh, not? So I should maybe have like maybe a beer, a couple shots, a couple shot, beer and a shot, beer and a shot, beer and a shot, puke. Well, I don't know about that. Okay. Um, all right. Then I'll have something to drink. I'll have a little shot of Jack Daniels. How's that sound? I like it. I'll make okay. sure it's there. All right. You're going to gargle it like, uh, the wrestlers do. <laughs> no, no. They gargle that shit. Oh yeah. That shit is fuck. That look, it, when I when I watch movies and I see a guy take a drink, I'm thinking, oh god, I can't. You know, Lois, man, Lois can just she can put them back, man. I can't. She drinks fucking Jim Beam like it's fucking water, and I just can't do it. Now, uh, Jack Daniels with honey, you know, the honey Jack Daniels is not bad, but fuck, straight bourbon. Woo. Well, I'm gonna do it. I'll take a drink that night or that day. And we'll have a good time. Great job of getting the wide shot here from Kerwin selfies and getting Sherry's reaction. Um, and of course this is, uh, this is right after, uh, the collision of Hulk Hogan and, uh, 
and the Macho Man Randy Savage at WrestleMania Five. Yeah, Mega Powers explode, man! It just exactly set all kinds of records for the company. Huge deal, and we're hoping to set some records over at LowkeyBigHog.com because we're coming to Zanies in Nashville on December sixteenth, three o'clock in the afternoon. And you're in luck, Tennessee Titans fans, because the Titans are not playing that day. So you don't have to pick uh, them or us. You can just come see us Sunday, December 16th, three o'clock. It's my dad's birthday. Might drag him up there. That would be tremendous. Give him some Patron, get him on stage. Yeah. Let you bust his balls. It'll be fun. <laughs> He's not listening right now. So he doesn't know what we're planning. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. Uh, he's a good man. What are the odds that we can get Lois to Starcast? Oh, for crying out loud. We've tried. But... Okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. All right. The next episode of Life with Lois on Patron, Patreon, is going to be me convincing her to come to Starcast. Well, convincing means that you're pretty sure you're going to be able to pull it off. What me, tr- uh, me, I'm sorry, me trying to convince her to come to Starcast. How's that sound? I'm in. I like it. All right. All right. So I, she just, she just uh, doesn't want to do it. You know, I mean, she's lost. you know, I've lost 35 pounds on DDP yoga. She's lost like 16. Uh, but she's still, oh, look, there's a high knee by Brutus, the barber beef. Cake. And that's a great maneuver. Don't you think they're Conrad by Brutus? That, that high knee. Now he's going to put him to sleep. That's his move. Sends him into the ropes. He ducked out of the way and it's the sleeper. It's the Brutus. Look at him pop. And Hulk Hogan's making sure they clap, isn't he? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Here it is. There's a move. Clap for my friend. Clap for the wolf man. He going to rate your record high. Remember that song? No. I used to listen to that. That's from the guess who. I used to listen to that eating sardines and pork and beans out of the can. Surprise. <laughs> Fucking hillbilly. You don't like spam either. Here's good. Here's something. Fry up spam with red cabbage. How about fuck you? <laughs> so let's do some questions from Twitter at WHW Monday. AJ but before my to... internet drops out again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Everybody uh, remembers this most famously for me and Gene yelling, fuck it. On the sign fell. A- any sort of uh, backlash that you remember over that? No, none at all. But I, I, I thought that Rob Wright should be shit canned. Um, uh, but no backlash over that at all. Stink eye wants to know, did Brutus ever trim Tony's coin purse? No. Mm-mm. Uh, Daniel but it, wants, it, it needs, it needs trimming. Daniel wants to know, did Tony think demolition was a road warriors ripoff? Yes, I did. Bad money. Slim wants to know how all the way live is miss Elizabeth here. Bad money. Slim. I'm going to tell your wife on you. Motherfucker. Eric is over wants to know what exactly was in the cauldron. He means cauldron that sensational Sherry was stirring. Yeah, it was, it was a, well, Conrad said it was meth. And the fact that she's from Alabama, that could have been meth. I thought it was, I thought it was pot. The Irish Mexican wants to know, can Tony sing the fabulous Rougeau's theme? No, I can't. I don't even remember it. Oh, come on, Tony. We're all There's actually, American boys. What? All American boys. That was the fabulous Rougeau's theme. Yeah. How do you not know this? Wow. Throw on your Google machine. Fabulous Rougeau brothers theme lyrics. Okay. Don't, I'll throw it in my Google machine. Don't call us and... pretty boys. We're not a muscle head. We hate that okay. long haired look. We like no. the preppy look instead. What's wrong with that? We're all American boys, all American boys. We're all American boys, all American boys. We don't like heavy metal. We don't like rock and roll. All we listen to is Barry Manilow. <laughs> we're all American boys. 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 <laughs> Uh, Brian says this card had a legitimate timed intermission. Do you think this is something that should return in this era of four to six hour pay-per-views? Uh, yes, I do. Well, no, they already have intermission. That's just, they do. yeah. What is it called? Roman reigns match. That's what I had a feeling. 
No, that's not me. I was trying to be funny. I like Roman Reigns. Uh, right. Chuzzler wants to know what was Jesse Ventura's relationship with Vince like at this time? Uh, at this time, I think it was a very good relationship. Vince loved working with him on Saturday night's main event. I know a lot of people have, there's been not a lot of people. There've been some people out there that have shit on Vince's commentary to me, Vince McMahon and Jesse, the body Ventura were a great team. So I think they had a great working relationship. Jeremy G wants to know what was Tony's opinion of the red rooster gimmick? (laughs) uh, Well, I, I thought it was, uh, a good gimmick, shitty performer. Hoboken squat cobbler wants to know how did the atmosphere compare to a WCW pay-per-view? Would you repeat that again to me? How did the atmosphere compare? No, to no, a no, WCW no. The name Hoboken squat cobbler. Okay. This, uh, there was no comparison. This was big time atmosphere compared to what we had. It's not that uh, back in the, uh, back in the old Crockett days, uh, that, uh, is he, does he want to be compared to the Crockett's or moving forward to WCW? I don't know. I just, I read yeah. the fucking questions, dude. <laughs> Answer the ones you want. We'll skip the ones you don't. Wow. You really pissed off at me today. Aren't you? I mean, it's like what mother. <laughs> so, <laughs> snapping at me. Well, God uh, damn. Well, God damn it. I'm at the mercy of, I'm doing what I can here. I'm doing I, what I can. I, I get to, something I from you. Says, do, we got to tape my... Wednesday. We yeah. got to record Wednesday. I got work we to record do. Wednesday morning. Yep. Well, I'm at the house Wednesday morning. Great. How about getting the fucking internet? All right, here we go. Come on, bring him in. We got about 10 minutes left in the show. And we're going to see the big man Zeus go down like a tree trunk. Though the big foot, that should have been it. Okay, there was no comparison. The reaction to Hulk Hogan, the reaction that the fans had in the WWF. I mean, they were louder for music sometimes than they were the match, right? When the music hit and pop and they knew they were coming in, sometimes that was the loudest pop of the night. Look at Sherry trip up Hogan. One, two. Awesome. Uh, so there's no comparison. Tony Barker wants to know any heat with gorilla monsoon for you calling this pay-per-view instead of him. No, not at all, man. He's a pro. He wants to know what was the best part about working with Jesse Ventura? Uh, the best part of working with Jesse Ventura was that Jesse was willing to do whatever. And that's a pro. It's like, sure, let's do that. Sure. Let's do that. Never worried about how much I talked or how much he talked. Wasn't into that. Jesse had a big ego. Of course he did. But when it, when it came to putting the product over, uh, I think he put that ego aside. Gabriel wants to know, was Warrior winning the Intercontinental title the biggest pop you heard in the WWF? No, was not. Uh, he also wants to know, was it more awkward or unique when you were calling matches for Arn Tully and Dusty in the WWF as opposed to the NWA? Uh, it was unique. There was nothing awkward about it. I mean, I, uh, again, just like I was talking with Jesse, I, I put things aside and I just, I just called it. So it was unique. Lonely wants to know if you have an impression of Lord Alfred Hayes. Uh, the only thing I can say is, is Tony, you're a hell of a guy. A- and I mean a hell of a guy. And there are some very, very obtuse, terrible men in professional wrestling. And you do trust my judgment. Don't you, Tony? Yes, Alfred, I do. Well, one of those is Dick Murdoch. He's a, just a brute, a horrible man and never get associated with Dick Murdoch. You do trust my judgment. Don't you? That's Lord Alfred Hayes. Hey, the big man's down to one need. You see how they popped on that? Yep. And here comes the purse, the loaded purse that Sherry was trying to use. Now Hogan has it right. Here we go. Let's see what's going to happen right in the chin. And look how he's, yeah. Look how he's selling this and he picked him up. And I remember screaming my ass off on that one. How about immediately Zeus didn't know what to do, except I need to put my legs and arms together and immediately just snap to it. Doesn't get the pin. Sherry comes in and now here's the payoff. This is what right. pe- look at people going bananas for this. Yeah, absolutely. And right now, Jesse's admonishing me, Shivani, you are, you're actually condoning what they're doing to a female in the ring. And I, I think I said, that's no female. She's from Alabama. Something like, look at this shot, man. 
a little look risk, at her kicker legs. <laughs> a little risque for eighty eight, was it not? Or eighty nine? <laughs> yeah, it, it was. It was risque, but she did a hell of a job kicking her legs up in the air and selling it. And then, of course, Elizabeth with the right cross, and have we had our finish yet? Yeah, I think that was the pin. Okay, that was the pin. All right. Like he's acting like he's going to stab him now. I know. It's always been funny to me that, and we talk about this all the time on Bruce's show that Hulk Hogan's this baby face, but he's doing all this heel shit. And here you go. They're going to cut a woman's hair. Mm. Yeah. And they, uh, it, this had to hurt because they, they didn't really do it the first time. And he just tries to snap it. Like he would a, a, a hedge. Tony, <laughs> Tony, it's not her real yeah. hair. Oh, it's not. It's, it's an extension. extension. Come on. She just randomly shows up and has hair down to her fucking ass one day. You think, she, boy, she must have been using some of that horse shampoo. That shit's really working out. Last time the I Buffalo saw her, shampoo, she had a bowl man. cut. Yeah, the buffalo. How about on the flesh covered yarmulke? Let's. <laughs> uh, the fans go. The fans go crazy. And you know what? Uh, Wade Wade Keller may have given a lot of these matches uh, bad marks and deservedly so. But as a whole, the fucking fans love this show, man. I'm glad somebody did. I'll n- I never want to watch it again. I loved it. It was one of my favorite shows, but it's forever associated with this horse shit monkey fucking football routine we had recording today. And you're never going to watch SummerSlam again without thinking of sardines and pork and beans and Vienna sausages. I hate everything right now. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you, as we're watching, uh, Hogan must pose mm-hmm. chat me up here. Uh, why don't you think Barry Wyndham was on this card? He's with the company. Uh, yeah, that, I don't have an answer for that. He should have been. He's a great worker, right? I mean, oh, right. Of course he is. I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't know what you're saying right now. Well, you can't hear me. No, I can hear you, but I mean. Seems to me you could have found a fucking spot for him. You got all these J Browns on here. He could actually work. He could have carried Hercules Hernandez. Mm-hmm. But let me ask you this. Was Barry in a program at that time? Uh, no. What does you that only, mean? you only are in matches oh, okay. here. If you're in a program, what was Hercules program? I don't know. See what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? Listen, it's Hercules. Okay. Armchair booking. And what? then of course we always wonder. When we see matches now, we're always going to wonder WWCD. I'm not, I'm going to wonder, um, why would Tony eat that? (laughs) Let's take a look at the replay once again, as he nails Zeus, he's down to both knees. Sherry comes in. Oh my God. And Liz throws her in from the outside in. That's the only replay we got. Yep. Because this. Is a terrible time for WWF production. Mm. We still got three minutes left in this pay-per-view. That's what I mean. Like we've got all this time to kill and we don't have, um, anything to do other than just posing routines. And I mean, this is just silliness, but people are paying money for it. So here we are. Let me, let me, let me, uh, kind of, uh, theorize or freestyle here. What's going on. Okay. Posing, posing. And the people in the truck, you got a replay. You got a replay. Yeah. Let's bring one in. They throw one in and Vince is now going nuts because they're doing it while Hulk is posing. So he's screaming back at the truck. Everybody's pissed off. And now we finally see the money shot. And by the way, so, he hit him. <laughs> Look at the guy in the, in, in the crowd with a tie on like, pick him up, body slam him. Everybody's ready for it. These dudes in the ties are fired up about this. Yes. Yeah. Just a, just Look, a immediately body slam. puts the legs and arms together. It's hilarious. Yeah. Here comes the leg drop. Let's see if there's a big pop. It's amazing. They conditioned all of America to think that's a finishing maneuver and they did it. Yeah. It was a simpler time. Conrad Thompson. No doubt about it. Back when there was no internet to have problems with. <laughs> this will never happen again. No, it will not. Cause I will just drive to Georgia. <laughs> Once baseball season is over, I'll be coming to the Conradison on a irregular basis. <laughs> irregular, sort of like your bowels. 
<laughs> Tony, when I'm watching the, uh, the thing, uh, the, the clock tick down here as Hogan has a woman by the throat. Yeah. Mm. Can't help, but feel like, uh, it's about that time. Absolutely. Conrad Thompson. It is time for Tony Schiavone one-on-one. And this is for the electronic heavyweight championship going up against the cable system. And Shivani has come to the ring. He is pissed off. He's got his modem in his right hand. And the cable company turns around. Shivani hits him with the modem on the top of the head. Their head opens up, splits off of the top. And we looked at, there are no brains down in there. There's not a brain in the fucking world. No wonder he's had internet problems. Thank you for being with us on SummerSlam 89 as we leave you with another pissed off Conrad Thompson. We're out of time. We'll see you next week on What Happened When on the MLW Radio Network and hopefully on Patron. <laughs>